Hello and welcome once again to Tinker Tailor Solder Fry here on the Mighty Loading Ready Run Video Entertainment Network. My name's Ian, and with me today is Beach. Hello. Yeah, and uh, we're well. You. Yeah. Th today uh, I'm going to be doing the grunt, the brunt of the work because yeah. this is a uh, kind of a barn burn. I've been wanting to do this for a while. It's time for us to make use of some of the Raspberry Pis that I've got lying around the house. <laughs> Just sitting around in stacks, taking up space. Yeah, just stacks and stacks of Raspberry Pis. Mm -hmm. Not mining bitcoins or anything. No, no. we're we're gonna. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this little dude and we're gonna turn it into a device that will bridge the gap between the ease of use of the home the HomeKit world of mm. iOS devices and the cheapness of open source everything. <laughs> but we'll start uh, with assembling this device. I want to actually just show this off because I, I really kind of like this. Mm -hmm. If we can get a close up shot uh, from Heather here uh, on the SD card. I, I hadn't realized until just a few minutes ago the delightfully low tech solution that this SD card uses to tell when something's plugged in. Yeah. Just goes in and then. Watch that lever. Oops, that lever hits there and now it's activated. Yeah, it's like, I know there's something in here now. Time to become electrically conductive. Yeah. Is that a, yeah, is that how all SD SD cards work? I'm pretty just, sure. Yeah, it's it's the only difference with the with the one like that is it does not have a spring on mm -hmm. it, like a spring lock. And a, yeah, and a catch. Yeah. So <coughs> let's just shove this into this case that I've purchased a long time ago to put it back. Mm -hmm. And now the Raspberry Pi is safely encased in plastic. Hooray. Good show, everybody. Let's yep, go home. That's the end. Uh, what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to force you all through the process of downloading and installing Raspbian onto an SD card. Mm. I'll leave that as an exercise for you, the viewer at home. I'm, pr I'm pretty sure you can, can do that. Yeah. There are a few different methods. But, but Raspbian is the, uh, is the OS Officially that, supported the OS, OS yes. that you're using. Now, the next thing that we need to deal with is something I completely forgot, and that is running an Ethernet cable from Ethernet through to the Raspberry Pi box itself. Oh, otherwise, we can't do things yes, like we, update or yeah. access it. Or, <laughs> it'll look really good sitting there. Yeah. Um, um, what version of Raspberry Pi is it? This is the Raspberry Pi Model B. So it's, uh, yeah. it's Raspberry Pi 1. Yes, yeah. 1 Model B. So it's not great, but we're going to be running it in a headless mode, so... Yeah, it's better than the A. Hopefully. In that, I believe... Almost got there. The, what made these special was uh, or, they doubled the amount of the RAM cam. in them. Yep. Uh, otherwise, they're exactly the same, if I remember correctly. I've got a, uh, a Wi-Fi USB thing attached. I'm going to unplug it now because these are a pain to configure sure. if, they're not the, uh, if they're not of the approved variety, and that one most definitely is not. So is the aim with this that it's going to end up being a wireless box in your house, or you're going to have it living off of a router? No, somewhere? this could ju this I would normally just leave plugged in out of, off of a router, just mm -hmm. because the for, for something like HomeKit, you want, for something that's anything home automation based, you definitely want the connection to be as stable as possible. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And so, hence that. So let's boot her up and see. Uh -huh. Oh, well, let's... One sec, that's not actually attached to Let's wait until it's attached, and then we'll boot it up and see if we can find out what IP address is on, because that's going to be the other fun thing to do. Yeah. Uh, in the meantime, let's uh, break out some of the other materials we'll be using today. Um, to I, see, I can see you have the soldering iron out. Yes. So there's an intention to use this, yes. I'm sure. Uh, today... What I'd like to do, if at all possible, mm -hmm. if we can finish it up, is I would like to connect this uh, small Sonoff switch uh, purchased off of Banggood, but other Chinese retailers are available. Mm -hmm. That will run you about seven to eight dollars, depending on what you uh, what you're looking for. Maybe even less than that if you look around well. Neat. Normally, a plug for a uh, for a home kit enabled device will run you in the range of $25 and up if you can find it on sale. Neato. Usually up. The other thing we'll be doing is uh, burr, 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 burr. connecting. Thank you, Paul. We'll be connecting uh, some RGB and white LED strips. 
Now you can do this with uh, you if you choose to. You can do this with Philips Hue. Right. Say it makes a set of of LED strips, but those will run you into the hundreds of dollars for mm -hmm. Philips Hue. Everything you see here, yeah, is under twenty dollars. Not bad. Which yeah, for five meters of Light. Contro controllable LEDs, is pretty good, I think. Now, what's the uh, what's the use case? Is that going to be behind TV lighting? Is that going to be some sort of accent lighting? You is can it... do whatever you like with it. I see. My okay. plan is, I was thinking behind, uh, I was thinking of trying to make my own LED panels for streaming. Oh, cool. Okay. But then I thought, you know, maybe that if that doesn't work out, I like the way that the uh, LEDs look behind the TVs here on sets, yeah, and so yeah. I might just do that myself as well at home. Is that the same LED system as we have behind the TVs, or it's... is this a separate? No, this is a Wi-Fi controller box. It's the same kind of rope lighting and the access, like how does it, you're going to show us how yeah, this we'll, all connects we'll, together. Yeah, we'll get obviously. into it in terms of the software and as well. But sure. uh, normally what this does is you download a, an app off of the App Store, which then sends unencrypted passwords and codes to an IIS server in China, which then sends the information back to this to control. Oh, good. Not a good idea. We're going to deal with that when the time comes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> additionally as well, just because I wanted, I'm, I'm, Feeling saucy today, if we've got time, I want to try installing this temperature and humidity sensor into this plug, which is apparently a thing you can do. That's rad. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's let's uh, let's get started by booting up this Raspberry Pi. Move the things away that you're not going to need for the yeah. time being, then. Okay. And let's... Uh... Where is the USB port? It's on the back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> which is the back. Yeah, the back is the part that has the, the SD card. I only say that because that's what I decided the back was. Okay, well, it's uh, lights are flashing. Hey, we got some flashing going on here. It's good. Boom, okay. All the uh, lights have. Burp, 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 burp. There we go, yeah. The little indicator lights have begun to flash. Therefore, we know that it's booting. <laughs> <laughs> if there was only one light and it was red, that would mean that something would, be, would have been wrong. But having the disk access light and the network access light and other lights. Generally means it's good. It's funny because on the on the original Pi, they gave you I think like four or five lights to deal with, and then they they hooked up. They ended up using an RJ45 port. That's the Ethernet port. They ended up using one that actually had the two flickering lights on the port, so they could take them off of the main board. They just ended up having using the ones that are already integrated into mm. the thing. But then that makes it hard when you're looking online to try inf to find information mm. about stuff because they're like, oh well, you need to is is your light green? What I'm light? Sorry. Which light? <laughs> which light is green? It's like, well, the light that's in the in the sequence is like, because it's not all the same anymore. Did you think your your mic is just rubbing against the inside of your shirt? That sounds just like me. Mm. So uh, let's see here. Now comes the question of which which IP address does it have? Mm. Yep, me either. Uh, so we're gonna start trying from 200, 202. I would appreciate that. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm just going to keep trying each IP going up from 200. This is, I mean, this is tedious. You should write a shell script to try each one individually. I so. probably should. That's too much learning for today, mm -hmm. though. <laughs> All right. Uh, in the meat, nope, we don't need to do that. Finding your pie. Oh, it'll be under the uh, MDNS name Raspberry Pi. Well, that makes it easy then. Mm -hmm. So we can just probably do SSH pi at raspberry pi dot local. Connection refused. Did okay. So when you formatted this card, mm -hmm. is this a fresh format? It is. Okay. Did you put did you put a text file that is called SSH? at the root of the card. No, I didn't. If you do that, it automatically enables SSH now. Oh, it's that's... It's the coolest damn thing. Well, then let's do that. Yeah, because you used to... So what you used to have to do is... Well, I'm glad I have you on this. Yeah, I know, because I did this I did this just recently uh, with my Pi at home, and uh, older versions, you had to hook up HDMI and hook up a keyboard and then boot into it, and then you had to go through the whole setup process on the Pi that way, and people were like, but we want SSH. You're like, well, we're not going to enable it by default. That's, in that's insane. So they made, a, they made the script... They made a script that detects is there a thing called SSH in the in the uh, root directory of the of the of the SD card, and if there is, enable SSH 
and then you don't have to think about it ever again. So I just have to, I just have to touch an SSH in there. Yeah, as long as it's in the in the uh, in, in the boot. in the actual yeah root of the directory. That's yep. Then you're, you probably should be fine at that point. Let's give it a try because that might have been the problem. Yeah, I hope it, so. It, well, if SSH was refused, that means Raspberry. That means that we got the correct IP address. Yes, yeah, that it's running, but it's one of those things where it's like you can't connect to me because yeah. I'm not. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's try that again. Excuse me. All right, maybe this would be a good time for us to throw up the uh, throw up the terminal on screen, which is going to be a new addition for Tinker Tailor Solar Fry. I'm excited for this. For this. Oh! oh. <laughs> Let's just clear Let's just that. Clear up. that up. <coughs> nice, nice. I was getting sound from the internal microphone on your laptop. Oh. Let me uh, mute that. I, I, I've muted it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Remove that. Okay, no, that has to be there. Yeah, just leave it right over my face. It's fine. It's, it's I, fine. I can, here, let me yeah. move that. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, there we go. That should be good. Sure. Okay, let's clear that again. And <laughs> that's SSH pi at raspberry pi dot local. Connection refused. Mm. Does it have so, to be a text file? Yeah, it's literally just a file. It okay. just has to be called SSH just a file. Yeah, and it shouldn't be called anything else. So the, the little, um, I just um, have a little network, uh, um, whatever, mapping program here. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't see anything called Raspberry Pi. It does see some stuff that it doesn't know what they are, though, which I guess is one of those things is probably the Pi. Well, it could be, yeah. SSH, zero yeah. bytes. That's perfect. That's all you need there. Okay. And then when it boots, that is the that is the that's the boot partition. That's mm -hmm. fine. That's what's supposed to be there. Yep. What's in command line? Oh, configure.txt. That might SSH is not in there. Okay. Well then. And this is the most recent yeah. image you could get. Yeah. Hmm. And why wouldn't it start? Let's try out? one more time, and if that doesn't work, we have plenty of HDMI devices in here that we can use <laughs> to make this e to make this easy on ourselves. Yeah, that's fine. Do you happen to know what the IP address was, Paul, that we were looking for? Um. So. So, like I was saying, there's a couple of IP addresses here that could be it. Okay. Like, I don't see anything actually re actually reporting itself as a Raspberry Pi. Hmm. But hmm. I do see some things that it do that this program doesn't know what they are. And I'm assuming one of those is the Raspberry Pi. Let's give that one a try. Uh, so, 51. Okay. So, 192.168.1.51. Well, I can. Oh. Okay. Does not appear to be the one. But it is something that has SSH. Yep. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, let's I not do that. that okay, so it's not 51. Uh, meanwhile, like the uh, the traffic lights outside are flickering <laughs> yeah. on and off. Why are they on our network? Uh, 53. 53. Grind, 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 grind. So this, I'm guessing, doesn't accept SSH no. given that it's so long. Okay. I mean, if it's 51. Um, uh, sorry, but... Tube Alloy in the chat says the SSH file is deleted each time you start. So if it didn't get deleted, that means it didn't see it. Yeah. Maybe, I, maybe I'm supposed to make an actual text file and not just a... I I, a file file. I swear it's supposed to just be called like SSH, and it can be zero bytes. It does not have anything in it. Like you have the headless enable thing right up right now. So, um, yeah. The, so there we go. Enable the second partition, not boot. Yeah, that that dude is saying yeah. something that doesn't matter. Uh, Rosodru in the chat says, yes, you need to make a text file. Yeah, so it can't just be a 
That's weird. Uh, see such volume slash boot. Well, why is there nothing in there? Why can I see things there, but not in the... Hmm. Interesting. Okay, well, you know what? Let's just make a text file. Let's stop beating around the bush. New text file. Computer. Desktop. Computer. Boot. Open. SSH is there. Mm -hmm. Well, fine. New. Save. SSH. Sure. Well, let's just delete that one. For headless setup, SSH can be enabled by placing a file named SSH without any extension onto the boot partition of the SD card. When the Pi boots, it will look for the SSH file. If it is found, SSH is enabled and the file is deleted. The contents of the file do not matter. It could contain text or nothing at all. Okay, well, that seems good. I just want to make sure there's a uh -huh. Let's remove that RTF extension. But we've been doing this. See, this is why I didn't want to make you guys work with this. Mm -hmm. Let's try that again. Okay. So did you reboot the Pi? The Pi is currently powered down. The boot file, or the SSH file, is now a text file for whatever that matters. Mm -hmm. but, it but it doesn't have a file extension. That's right. Yeah. It is just called SSH, which it is created yeah. in a text file. I mean, touch should have right. done it. Exactly. Touch, yeah. but who knows what wizardry we'll they're going with. <coughs> and we don't have any other Pis in the place that are that are hooked up and running that would have stolen Raspberry Pi dot local, I don't think. Stretch. Raspberry Pi stretch. SSH enable. Oh. August twentieth, twenty seventeen. That's perfect. Yeah. The, yeah, the other thing is only if you want to have your wireless set up automatically. And you don't need your wireless for this. And by the way, SSH file can be named SSH or SSH.txt. Don't put them in a thing called boot. Okay, well. Can, do we know for certain that it, that the, wait, let me. Do we know for certain that the Raspberry Pi has actually connected to the network successfully? You know, that's a good point, too. Mm -hmm. That's it. Because it's brand new. Mm -hmm. So all of the password stuff would be normal. All of the PHP stuff would be running. Do you, you want me to hide your... Yeah, I think we can hide that for now. Uh, you know what? Let's... Uh, hmm. Do we still have that HDMI cable? Yes, we do. I can grab that from here. Oop. We just straight up run it into a TV yeah. and see what's going on? Why not? Oop. Nope, that appears <coughs> to be for something else. Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry, I took that HDMI cable away. My apologies, Paul. Thank you. Can you get access to that from there? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm just going to sit here and look at the <laughs> camera. Will it look pretty? Oh, that's actually not a bad idea. We could watch the chat. My, my concern ah. mostly is I'm going to end up with my head down in the chat having Linux arguments with people. <laughs> found it. You found something. Uh, 167. Give it a try, Beach. You bet. Nope. Connection refused. Hey, I'm wondering if there's some other setup that needs to be done yeah, here. Yeah, I, I had a problem with my Pi one time where it would sit and sit and sit and sit and sit and sit for like at least three minutes, and something eventually would time out, and then I could log into it. <laughs> Every time I rebooted it, That's that was the worst. So when when my Pi when the SD card died, 
and I had to go buy a new one. It was a blessing in disguise because <laughs> I actually got to start everything from scratch and make everything work with SystemD, which was amazing. So much nicer to, to use um, new modern systems. I mean, there's, there's, I don't have a thing against SysV at all, but... Uh, SysV? Yeah, SysV in it. What the hell? That's, that's, SysV in it. That's good, Beige. I yeah. was about to say. Do you have a problem with SysV? I do not have a problem with SysV. What's your problem with SysV? System 5 initialization. I, I do not mind it at all. But certainly, getting to learn how the new system works, System D, I know, has its issues and people are upset about it. But I actually liked having a, an opportunity to try something new. Okay. Did it literally just not show anything? or? Well, the input button doesn't work. <laughs> But the power button certainly does. You turned on that computer, or that TV. Okay. <laughs> you also turned off the preview TV. Oh, hey, look at that. You've affected every TV other than wow. the one you were working on. <laughs> hey. Someone needs to design a system where televisions have different remotes. All right. We should just got a whole bunch of different TVs for this room. That would made it re really easily. I like cassette player says make a Raspberry Pi to control the TV now. Well, we actually have a Raspberry Pi that does control one of our TVs. That TV became broken. Mm -hmm. The Raspberry Pi, as far as we know, was not involved involved in that. No. You don't that. Not unless somebody threw it at the screen because that screen has a big crack in it. Okay, no signal there. All right. No signal here. I want to I want to make everybody's text bigger. I don't think it does. No, it doesn't. Oh well. Is the cable plugged in the right way? The HDMI cable? <laughs> Plug in the HDMI cable. Oh yeah, no, is it directional? It's a directional cable. Oh, is it? Yeah. Is is it is it plugged in the right way? Does that end say source? It, no, it doesn't. Why does that have? Why is that a thing? Active cables are, are a recent thing, apparently, so that you can run long distances. Oh, God. This I isn't even a long cable. Why do I feel old now? You know those, you know those monoprice red mirror cables? That, that's just directional, apparently. That's a, okay. that's a monoprice red mirror cable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you know those monoprice red mirror cables? That's what that is. Whoa, is it? Why? <laughs> They have that USB thing where you always do it the wrong way around the first time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's try rebooting it this again for the fifth time. That doesn't hurt it. No, it doesn't. It's not a shitty cable. It's a really good cable. Yeah, there we go. Love. That's, okay, that's that's what's supposed to happen. All right. So the fact, the fact that it's an uh, uh, a active cable means that it is quite thin. It is an extremely thin cable even though it is ah. very... Uh, even though it is relatively long, as that's cables why. as HDMI cables go. I mean, that's doing its job. That's pretty good. Failed to start. LSB root file system to fill permission. Oh well. That's fine. Yeah. Heather, can you turn on the TV for us, please? There's a button on the side of it that you should be able to press to put turn it on. Maybe. Yeah, it's in the down the lower left hand side of the TV on the back. Kind of squarish. Yep. Yeah. Lotto okay. made it. Should it be on HDMI three? Yeah. It okay. Should be. It is showing nothing. That is probably because. So it's a waiting this. login, but it no, won't. Oh my God. Your, your IP address is IPv6. Hmm. It's not assigning an IPv4 address. Okay. That's weird. Oh, well, you pulled an IPv4 address. Yeah. Well, I I didn't it, it, right here. it didn't throw one of those up either, though. What, what is it this time? Uh, one six zero zero. Oh, fuck. Hello. It wasn't done. That's a register dump. Um, is this Pi? Has this Pi worked before? It, sh it has. I haven't used it with this OS yet, but it's 
left your Raspberry Pi out on the windowsill a little too long. Tell me there. more about the EXT FS Air 3 new high speed SD card. It just redetected your SD card. Re oh. Huh. Just redetected it. So it's like your it's like the file system died. That doesn't seem good. No. Um well. And you just wrote this to the card recently, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So I guess we do the boring thing. Do we rewrite it again? I guess. We it's, yeah. yeah. We we had a thing. We have a thing set up so you can see. Uh, so so you can see Ian's screen. Uh, we didn't count on <laughs> needing to see the Raspberry Pi screen. <laughs> It's just, right. It's just weird that it's pulling an IPv6 and and not also an IPv4 address. But let's do uh, let, let's let's just download noobs. Yeah. We have that on our. Yeah, we do have a card. Well, it's it's oh, but it's a micro SD card. We have a micro SD, the full size SD adapter around here. Hmm. I feel like he's intending to take it home, though. No, no, I'm. I have no. Need. Oh, this is just for fun tonight. This, yeah, this is just going to. I, I've I've got my system running up at home. This is for everyone else to see how it's done. Okay. We could grab the three. Do you know where? Do you know where that new card is? I think it's hanging up on the board up there. You two just pointed in opposite directions. Yeah, it's really good, eh? <laughs> the you pie. Could not have pointed in more different directions. The pie is. <laughs> Is I could do I could try. <laughs> Good for us. <laughs> so um, the uh, the pie is in a box over there, which is a bad place for it. And then the noobs is hanging on the board, like you said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's going to take us thirty-five minutes to download noobs here. So let's ah. not do that. No. Let's work with a currently working pie. Huh. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. Thank you. <coughs> yeah, this wasn't strictly an error. I mean, it saw the Ethernet. Have all the things that come hey. It saw Ethernet getting unplugged. But yeah, the fact that it's like mad about the file system, I'm like, that's weird. That shouldn't be. Yeah. Let's say. Yeah, actually, yes. Let's go with that. Perfect. So we can overwrite this, right? The one that's in here? This guy? Um, that is, that's just a card reader. With the the you... card itself is inside here, right? Oh. Or a card itself is inside here. This card here. reader, yes. Yeah. Yes. It's just to be used if you need to use noobs again. To download uh, it onto there. Okay. So we'll yeah. just, yeah, we'll just go with the currently working Raspberry Pi and sure. then we can. I ruin thought that was the case. Everything later? But yeah. So did we change the IP on this file? I don't think so. No. Mm, okay, good. Or I mean the login. Uh, that if that's the that Pi is uh, set to automatically boot into a kiosk mode of Chrome. Okay, that's with the chat. So we'll have to. <laughs> so we have to uh, SSH in and have get to a way out of it. To get out of it. Do you do you want to do you want to show everybody what that looks like? <laughs> Well, I don't have a keyboard, but yeah. Where, where's the little uh, Bluetooth keyboard? Oh, that's a good question. The tiny one? Yeah. The Logitech one. Yeah, that really nice Logitech one with the trackpad on it. Oh yeah, it's also sideways. Because it would <laughs> normally it would be in land or in portrait yep. mode. Yeah, this was a clever little thing that. Uh, that we tried doing. Yeah. Okay. I think so Paul there we put go. That together. And here's Chrome. SSH Pi at Raspbian. Wait, no, Raspberry Pi. Yeah, Raspberry Pi dot local, right? Dot local. <laughs> Actual refused. Oh, there it goes. I knew it. Did we just not enable SSH on this as well? I'll bet we didn't. Do you want to? Because well, we kind of have, have to. to. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we didn't don't have to. We count. didn't have to previously, but uh, we kind of have to now. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to use a card reader for that? I mean, that's what it's I for. I don't have another option, do I? No. Sweet. That worked. Great. Okay. <laughs> We're uh, 45 minutes in, and finally we've gotten to the point where we can start doing something. Yeah. Boy. Uh, you got a new channel for your show. Just double 
don't know if it's spring loaded. It doesn't feel like it is. Well, you saw it for a second there. You guys saw the chat. We need we need some hemostats. Sideways. Is that the desert dust chat client? It is. Well, it is. It's, it's after a fashion. It's the same. It's actually just Chrome, uh, but it is Chrome with a um, custom style sheet and uh, JavaScript stuff installed on it to mm -hmm. make it to get that out ahead to of make it big and yeah. easy to read yeah, and simplified. Oh, well, well, it's coming. But it is the same the same system that we use there we for go. Oh, uh, got it. Desert Bus. Whew. Yeah. You had to do some pretty special stuff to get that to run properly, Paul, is my understanding. Because you had to make it run in the reverse order. It had to, it was all. Yeah, so, I mean, one of the things, I don't, I'm, I think we, we talked about this during Desert Bus, but yeah, one yeah. of the things that we, that we have like so we that's like a the idea is that that's a chat that's going that we can watch um and because the camera is above the chat like usually you have, we have the chat like sitting on the ground and then the camera is above the chat um we want to have new new items in the chat appear at the top instead of the bottom so that people aren't always looking at the bottom of the thing. yeah otherwise because then you're looking closer to where the uh, uh, where the camera is, mm -hmm. uh, and so I had to reverse it to make it so that the chat goes from top to bottom instead of bottom to top. And there's probably ways of there's probably fancier ways of doing it than what I did, or more efficient ways of doing it certainly. Um, but what I did is um, I. So it's I, I'm applying I'm taking the actual Twitch chat. Again, you could be running the chat in IRC or something like that, which we have done in previous years for Desert Bus. But the nice thing about running the actual Twitch chat and then modifying it is you get all your emotes and all your other stuff like that for free. Yeah. Which is kinda nice. Yeah. So in order to make it run backwards though, um, what I did is I am I rotated I told the entire chat to be rotated uh, 180 degrees so that everything would be upside down. Right. And then I said, every individual line, rotate yourself another 180 degrees <laughs> to go back up straight again. <laughs> so you'll flow in the right order. So 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 that way it goes from top to bottom, but they're all still uh, actually upright. Yeah. Victory! It finally We're works. We're in. We're in. <clears throat> Great. So you, you have successfully SSH'd? Yes, we have successfully SSH'd. We can now put this back to that. Can I, uh, should I pop up your terminal again? Yeah, let's do that. Boop. This is a security risk. Okay, we're in. All right. So at this point, we'll now want to Ah, enable some stuff. We've enabled SSH. Next up, we need to install Node, I believe. I kind of just want to borrow your other Pi and just dick around on it. Get a monitor and keyboard and just fuck around for If a while. you think you can. <laughs> uh, do we remember if this, if this is Jesse or not? It should... S this is Jesse. Okay. Yeah, and I know that because uh, when we when we got it and we installed it, it was uh, two days after this is when they released the stretch thing, and I was like, please give this back to me so I can put stretch on it, <laughs> so we can have it like oh, better. And it's like we have already set everything up, and I'm like, well, I don't want to screw around with anything we've already set up. That would be ideal if we didn't. So, well, the two things you're going to need for uh, <coughs> for home to get Homebridge installed yep. are going to be Git and Make. Okay. So we'll need to install those. And what do they you do? Get it, and then you make it. That's <laughs> exactly what they do. Good. Huh. Maybe run that get update? Yeah, I think that's what we need to do here. Is it pseudo app, app get update? Sorry. Let's watch that for a bit. So you can do this on really any number of, uh, of devices. Uh, HomeKit, Homebridge, I believe, will run on any system that will run a node instance. So you could run this on your Windows box, or you could run this on your Mac if you so choose. I'm personally running it inside of jail on FreeNAS at home. But 
these you know Raspberry Pis are a pretty cheap little computer. Slow down and say that again. You're running yours in a. I am running my version of Homebridge mm -hmm. inside of a jail. Yes. Running on FreeNAS. There we go. Okay. Jails, for those who are wondering, are sort of a uh, a stripped down virtual machine for BSD. It's just sitting in there. It's got its little tin cup. They do that um, across the bars. Referred to as <laughs> ch root jails, as a as a way of creating a new root. Uh, a, a new a new root level like a slash mm -hmm. level uh, tree and you can run you can run something under there thinking that it belongs to another system but it actually is all its own system yeah. and it's like no but you're still running underneath Linux you just can't affect my other Linux or my other BSD you're, you, you got to give it's got its own set of users its own set of uh, permissions it's yeah it's really, a fascinating way to really, do a uh, virtual machine I think yeah really kind of cool anyway we're we're there nice. Uh, for older versions, we need C++14, <coughs> which we don't, thank goodness. Now let's install Node. Boop, boop. And, uh, uh, uh. Let's use the apt-get repository. Yeah, I like to call them cheroots, too, but I <laughs> think that people wouldn't have got it if I said cheroot. They would have assumed it was something you smoke. Sure yeah, right. Try the churros. Hmm, let's see what we got here. Four nine, nice. Arm seven. Okay, so we can use the the fancy oh, method good. to get. I'm not gonna type that in. That's too long. And now we wait a short time. Alrighty. While we're waiting, we should uh, probably, let's examine the switch first. Okay. So we can show this bad boy off. Uh, this was... <laughs> yes. That was real cool, actually. Thank you. <laughs> it's like you went down, but it came out the top. So this is the Sonoff, Sonoff, I like calling it a Sonoff. Yeah, yeah. It's like a shotgun. Uh, switch, Wi-Fi enabled. Uh, you can also push the button here to to switch it on and off. But what it is, is it's a bare wire, 10 amp uh, switch. You screw your wires in there to, for in and there for out. Okay. What it looks like on the inside is, is this. Oh, a little bit of magic. Yeah, there's not much to these things here. But I do want to point out to the people at home the lovely, lovely uh, job of soldering those, Damn. those leads. That to me so that to me explains exactly why this is only rated for ten amps. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of insane. All right. Okay, hold on. I need to get the uh, Node.js installing here. Um, wow. Now, what I talked about earlier with the the firmware going back to China. This particular type of switch has been very well examined by the modding community, and there is a completely open source, completely free replacement firmware for these devices. Oh, yep, neat. So that means we can be relatively sure they're safer. Yeah, because that way, I mean, the code's there to inspect. It's on GitHub. There hasn't been any sort of brouhaha over problems. Sure. Does it matter which way it goes nope. back? Thank Christ. The only issue we have is that we need to we need to solder some header pins on there. Oh, okay. And that's going to be our next bit. But that will be happening once we get Homebridge installed and working correctly. Okay. Alrighty. So we've got that installed. We don't have to. We do want also a couple other libraries. The lib avahi compat lib dns and the ssd dev. So Vahi is uh, it's like it's the bonjour. Yeah. If you if you're familiar with Max, or that's what it is. Zero conf. Yeah. If you're familiar with other things. No. Uh, so let's bonjour. That as well. Sorry, Vahi. Avahi. 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 Yeah. A v a h i. Avahi. And I will post the the links to the instructions I've been follow I followed in the past, as well as the links to where you can purchase these devices in the forums. So. Get ready for that later. Okay. Just, just it's a, it's a great like, you know, computer 
uh, uh, opaque computer jargon thing where it's like, so yeah, you want Avahi, and and you know if you don't know what that is, it's basically just bonjour, yes, or uh, zero conf, or zero conf. You'll figure it out. Yeah, I like that. It's like none of those were words english words <laughs> somebody did in Some, one of those was a french word but i don't know why you would be using that word so, so somebody did ask uh um <clears throat> is it ul rated and oh god no there's nothing there's nothing on here there's nothing on the box i think or anywhere that says that this has gone through the no. universal laboratories Th there is there is underwriter no. laboratories ul has disavowed all knowledge of its yeah. existence Th there there is no rating for this because and that's why one of the reasons why it's so cheap is that you're not getting any sort of rating. Yeah. So be aware of the risk. Yep. Uh, someone in chat says, for a zero, comp, uh, zero configuration client, Avahi does take a lot of configuration. Doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so now we can finally install Homebridge itself, which is just simply su do npm install dash g dash dash unsafe dash perm Homebridge. You just literally typed in unsafe? Yes. <laughs> unsafe permanent. Oh, permanently unsafe. <laughs> when you're building any sort of when you're system, building any that's how you want to that's that's how how roll. roll. Mm -hmm. Let's upgrade this thing to SID. Oh, jeez, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's uh, jump back into... Oh, where you get, yeah, let's jump back into the terminal here. We should have that... We can watch that build. I'm going to bring up my work surface here so we don't burn the table. How, how much how much processor power is this going to take? <laughs> for the soldering, not for the... <laughs> because we need to install the header pins. We can do that while this is currently building. All right. Let's go back to Trello and bring up our information on the Sonoff. There, there are actually a number of competing firmwares and methods of integrating these particular types of switches. Mm -hmm. in, uh, but I've chosen this particular one by Arenst on GitHub. Shout out to you, Arenst. Yep. <laughs> so I need to connect to the correct... Uh, One. So there's five exposed pins, but only one of one of them is not required. That's good. You got a four to five chance of getting this right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Do we have any information as to which pins are the ones that are clear? The, the, the sticky uppy ones. <laughs> well, I need to add the pins. So I think. That one looks like it's not actually, well, that's a problem. Do you want the modifying one? Oh, no. There's one of these pins is currently blocked off. Damn it. I wish I knew for sure. Let's see here. Motor clockwise, anti-clockwise. Like, you must have a picture of what's been already soldered down mm -hmm. is, right? You'd think so. <coughs> Excuse me. I really need to get a cough candy or something. Okay, let's see what this is here. You know what? We can... U4. I'll bet is the... Please check the specific module. Oh, the specific module pages. Great. Uh, the, the Raspberry Pi appears to be done. Great. Although there are a few warnings there at the end. Uh, yeah. And no description. That's actually exactly where we need to be for that. Okay. And now. You, you have no, you currently have no license. <laughs> There's a six to eight week waiting period. Yep. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to test this out by running. Home bridge. All right. So okay. test. Oop. Let's say uh, 
not a huge success. Okay, no at Homebridge? Can't find. Okay, let's just attempt restarting it here first. Because that may be good. Uh, let's see. Do shut down dash R now. Now. And we'll wait for that to come back up while I find out which pins. Aha, there we go. Four serial pins, 3v3, RX, TX, and ground are available in the middle of the PCB right next to the onboard button. New versions have five pins below the button. Ignore the pin furthest away from the button. Aha! Uh -huh. what, 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 is, what is that pin for? They don't say. I believe that is the mystery pin. Though the square pin right next to the button is the 3.3 volt line. So that's important to know. I just wonder if it's like, on newer models, there might be five pins. Whatever you do, do not touch the fifth, fifth pin. <laughs> even uh, when it's plugged in, even when it's not. Even when it's not. What? what why? What does it do? I can't tell you. <laughs> Unfortunately, no one can know what the fifth pin does. Don't you mean it can't be told? No, no one can know. All those who have seen the fifth pin have gone insane. There we go. There's the solder. Okay, I think we should be back up by now. Yep. When in doubt, restart. Interesting. Okay. Does it tab complete if you type in home? No, it does not. Okay, so it's not... Either it's not installed under that name, or it's um, it's not found in a directory. It can, like it's not found in path. Mm -hmm. So if it's not found in path, where does it normally install to? Was this a Python program? Is this it's from, a node. It's just no. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, it's from like Node.js, that kind of thing. Yep. You're interesting. Okay, hold up. You did. This was a. A global install, right? Dash G, right? Yeah. Yeah. Let's check. Yes, you do npm install dash. No, I did not do a global install. That's why. Ah. Yeah. So let's do that instead. So you just installed it in whatever directory you were in at that point. Apparently, we'll do it right this time. Dash G instead of dash F. Mm, yeah. I'm not even sure what npm install dash F does. Of course, I bet you. Do it, do it regardless. Yeah. The keys are like ne right next to each other. Yep. You did an unsafe force. <laughs> that, that seems fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now it's doing the proper thing. So while it's doing that, then let's get this soldering underway. Ah, and then when we're done that, it might be time for us to take a short break. Okay. I saw a video of the other, the other day of a, uh, it was an interview with um, Steve Wozniak, hmm. um, a contemporary interview with him. He was talking about, you know, talk, just talking about some sort of Apple history stuff and showing the original Apple One prototype boards and that kind of stuff. And uh, took a, a few minutes out of the interview to do a little soldering. And uh, yeah, stuck it in his mouth, did the whole thing like that. <laughs> And you know what? If it's good enough for Steve Wozniak. Good enough for me. There you go. That's it. So let's uh, let's just have a look here and make sure that that's running properly. So you did you solder things back together? Is that what you've done there? No. What I've done here is added a serial terminal 
to this device. Oh, I didn't even see you slide that thing in there. Yeah, and so I've got these three uh, pins here. Okay. I'm not sure if those are visible to anyone, but... Yeah, there we go. So I've added this, these four pins, 3.3 mm -hmm. uh, volts, something else, something else ground. Transmit receiving yeah, ground. Yeah, exactly. And don't get it on the fifth pin yep. because that that's wouldn't have meant anything. That's the mystery pin. Right. So th those are what's going to allow me to add the new firmware to this device. Cool. And that's all done through just a ribbon cable. Yep. Plug Thankfully. Thing in. Neat. Uh, yeah, so let's get that ready to go for when we uh, want to return. This is brand new. <laughs> I don't have, I've never actually used one of these before. Ah. And just because I wanted to make this even more fun and exciting, I'm gonna break out the breadboard. Okay, you know what? I think I have the right connectors, or maybe I do. Mm -hmm. Well, we can make this. We're gonna make this work one way or another. I love this giant ribbon you have. Oh, perfect! I do have a few. Two. That's not enough. Mm. We might have to harvest some from uh, the collection we've got for the Naomi board. But we can do that. All right. Aha! So here we go. Let's go back to the terminal. No warnings. No warnings whatsoever. Home bridge. That's a lot of warnings. <laughs> These are apparently normal warnings, though. We just okay. moved the warnings. There we go. So we have a home bridge oh, fascinating. working here. Uh, I'm going to see if we can find it on our phone. Right, so the, the warnings specifically are saying that Node.js is using the Apple Bonjour compatibility layer of Vahi, and it doesn't like that. So it warns you twice, saying, please fix this program so it uses the native API. No! But if you go use the native API, either that's a superset of wherever Bonjour fits in, or it just avoids the Bonjour stuff altogether, which is what you want because it's all HomeKit, <laughs> which is an Apple thing. <laughs> So you don't want to change any of this. Very confusing. Yeah, okay. Also, my phone's locked up. So this what? is just a... <laughs> I'm serious. This is not... That's so weird. This is a bad day. Bad it's going to take a great screenshot. Yep. Okay, Okay. there we go. That's down. <laughs> oh, Let's boot this up. Got... You know what? It was like on the last Friday. It was like that for me. <laughs> take that break right now? <laughs> Let's or... take that break. All right. We'll come back with things working. <laughs> Well, we'll come back in a few minutes, and hopefully things, things will might be, work. Things might work. Let's let's not say everything will be working. Yeah. Yeah. Let's not make yeah promises we can't keep. If that's all it took, then yeah. Anyway, uh, we're back in just a few minutes. Don't go away. Welcome back. Beach has a big monitor now. Woo! He's having fun. Can, can you like tilt the monitor? It's kind of blocking your face. At all. There we go. I could just slide over also. That'll do it. All right. He's so. just playing Super Nintendo in the corner now. Yeah. I'm trying to set this thing up for what you normally use Raspberry Pis for, which is his tiny little Super Nintendos. <laughs> oh, this is not good. So, we're going to try adding a home here. Uh, let's call it Moonbase. And save. That seems done. Is this going to take control of all our lights? It shouldn't, hopefully. By, by force. So <laughs> what happens when you add a home? Uh, the Apple program allows you to add accessories using the HomeKit code, which scans the base at the bottom. Uh, we found out that actually these, it's the same font that's used on Apple scratch-off cards for payment. Oh, cool. The iTunes cards. Okay. Which uses a special font. Uh, but you have the op option to don't have a code to scan, enter it manually. And if we go back to the terminal, that's what this little guy here is all about. 
that's the code that you scan to make this home bridge work properly. So we'll enter it now. That is 03145154. And now we have the ability to add accessories to our home, but we don't have any accessories listed yet in the in the Raspberry Pi. So we'll need to do some editing of the config.json first to get that working. So the so the Raspberry Pi it would be reporting to the home kit what is available. Correct. So, but, but the Raspberry Pi doesn't know what's available. Correct. Which means we should probably move on to the Wi-Fi controller, I think, because that's going to be the goal of tonight is to get that up and running. So this is said Wi-Fi controller. This is uncharted territory for me too, which is going to be exciting. Uh, yeah. It wants between 12 volts and 24 volts of DC power. Uh, again, based on these screw terminals here. So that's going to be a fun one trying to get that into there. Based on whichever ones you happen to screw into, it's like, that should be like, what, 16 <laughs> volts? Sure. Well, keep in mind, you're going to want to choose your voltage that you input based on what the voltage of your LEDs are. Oh, okay. These ones, if I look on the, on the thing here, are rated for DC 12 volts. Oh, it's, it's written in black and white right yep, there. Yep, right okay. on the label. And so the idea is <coughs> you have to... So the idea here is that you're trying to get... Right there. Um, Upside down, though. Uh, that's there we better. go. Is that every three... Near the copper line, the three... Yeah. But it's like, is, is every three lights... Another 12 volts? No. But, but is the idea with that strip, though, is that you can break it on any of the three light chunks that's exactly right so i mean the maximum length that these things can be is five meters yeah because of the you know the fact that they're wired in series right but you can break them apart every three lights at any of these points and because these are actual contacts you can buy uh right angle joins to stick them together you can you can right. solder them if you preferred or you can just leave them as is uh, i chose the non-waterproof version which means mine don't have a coating mm. Here at the office, we have a bunch that are covered in a like sort of a silicone caulk that uh, means they're waterproof, so they could be used for an outdoor application or if things get messy here. Yeah. It also means that they don't stick very well to things. That's true. So first up, we need to get this thing up and running, I believe. Let me bring up my own instructions, because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> All right. So these use a package for Homebridge called Magic Home. Because this, while it's not branded as Magic Home, uh, the person who wrote the plugin bought his as a Magic Home device. <laughs> you just found a very interesting uh, error. The SSH server is... And then it says, okay. okay. So I'm assuming that means the SSH server is okay. Let's hope so. Those are two separate statements. I hope it changes it back to is not. So I'm just going to make a new tab here in our, no, no new tab in terminal. Let's just close down HomeKit. And we're going to install the. So the, the idea is that HomeKit has uh, a big database of extension, of plugins that you would then Right. Choose which you want to actually install for your particular devices. Exactly. You can you can search them on the uh, on the npmjs.com repository for for Node. Uh, just search for the words Homebridge, and you'll find everything that Homebridge currently supports. And I guess people are writing new ones all the time. Oh yes, and updating them too. The what got me into this originally was that I wanted to get started with some home automated lights, so I bought some IKEA lights, knowing that they would eventually be supported by HomeKit, and got, you know, I got anxious, or uh, I got impatient, thank you, that's the word. Got impatient waiting for them to update themselves for HomeKit so I could use Siri to turn on my lights, and found out that HomeBridge allows this, as well as a number of other things. So at home, I've got one, uh, a Wemo light, I haven't installed any of these Sonoffs yet. Uh, I've got the IKEA lights. I've configured a webcam to just keep an eye on things and a lock that locks my front door and unlocks it when I arrive. 
all controlled through the system. So if you were to say, come visit me and I would allow you to stay in my home, I'd give you access to my home so you could turn on lights and lock the door when you left, all without having to give you a key. But to install the plugin. So, so your host can lock you inside and then film your reaction. Yes. <laughs> or I could lock someone and inside. And turn all the lights off. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just npm install dash g for global homebridge dash magic home. And it's just going to throw it in there with probably no problem. Oh, look, errors. <laughs> Why what would a, you what, say what something like that? You know, yeah, well, I need to do this as an SU. <coughs> Excuse me. Do, do it again. Grrr, animals. That looks much better. Okay. Aren't those still a bunch of errors? Oh, no, no, no these are errors from the previous, uh, previous test. So now comes the hard part. And let's uh, cyberduck. Let's cyberduck. Is, is, is that what the kids are calling it these days? <laughs> Indeed. Uh, let's bring up the uh, let's bring up the full screen on the computer here, and we'll skip. You no, know, we'll remind me later for the next version of next version. Cyberduck. This cyberduck. Uh, this let's make a new uh, connection. Let's make a new connection. Whoa. Let's open a new connection. And uh, close this up so I don't have as many of my other things visible. And we're gonna go as an SSH connection to Raspberry Pi dot local username Pi password Raspberry. You can of course fix these for your own. One nine two one six eight dot four. Wow. Also, why is it? Uh, Taking that long. To connect. Let's check the IP address of the actual. Ah, I don't know why, but it's trying to connect to a different Raspberry Pi. Oh, is it trying to connect to the one that Beej is messing with? No, oh, that could be it. It better not. I'm not on the I network. Too dumb. <laughs> I said no. Okay. No. <laughs> Stop. Try again. Skip this version. Hopefully I don't need it. Open connection. Ah, because it was FTP. There we go. 192.168.1.105. Pi. Raz. There we go. Okay. And let's have a look at the... I, I would assume that, like, your system at home that controls, like, say, your door locks does not have the default Pi and Raspberry as your Most password. Most definitely not. <laughs> For logging in. Yeah, that would be... Uh... <laughs> Also, the, the firewall doesn't allow access to my home bridge by itself. Ah, uh, okay. So the, you can configure uh, home, kit, home bridge and home kit to be accessible remotely, but in order to do that, you need either an Apple TV or a iPad running iOS 11 or higher. Now, if you don't have an iOS device and you don't have a Mac, you can also do a lot of this using some other uh, home automation software that's open source. Mm -hmm. uh, home... Kit? Yeah, they're all home something. Yeah, they, they? They, yeah they, 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 there are other ones out there that work on the same principle as this. But home be, Blump. Yeah, but because we're Apple users, or at least I'm an Apple user. and this One's called Home Blump? I don't know. Sure, why not? <laughs> you, you, you fork it right now. You can yeah. make Home Blump. You, you can, can make, make Home Blump, home blump if I wanted to, yeah. Okay, uh, right stock. down here we got HomeBridge. And so what we don't have right now is a config.json, which I believe lives yeah, right at the root here. So we need to... Uh, da, da, da. This, yeah, would this also allow you to interface with stuff like um, like Google Home and Alexa and stuff? It does have certain plugins for that, yeah. 
Uh, one of the plugins I have that I haven't really fully integrated yet is just, they call it the HTTP everything plugin. And it just allows you to send HTTP uh, get and put requests, arbitrary ones that you've pre-programmed and connect them as buttons on your phone or on your iPad or as Siri commands. Ooh. So, you, you, you know what uh, is controlled through HTTP get commands? Mm -hmm. This very overlay? The very the overlay. So that might become useful. So we've created our config.json, and I'm going to use Sublime Text JSON. to edit it because it has some nice highlighting, and I like highlighting. Uh, we need to add an accessories to our list here. I think we might need to add something else. We might actually need to add a hub, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, where we go here? Installation. Yes, we need to start with, or it is an accessory by itself. Ah, hello. <laughs> All right, so we've added the accessory. Let's save our config.json file, and let's try launching Homebridge again. Let's see how it complains. Okay, it's complained. Uh, there was a problem reading your config JSON file. Please try pasting your config JSON here to, to have a look at it. Uh, oh, oh, that's a website. I was like, paste it into your terminal? What? Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> oh, they just want you to link it. Yeah. I'm just going to check my own configuration at home here. Uh, da, 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 da. Where on earth? Uh, SH. Jesus. Pi at one nine two. It's been a while since I've done this, so bear with me for just a moment. Okay, and c.homebridge and cat my config.json. So now I wonder if Siri, can you, because you can make, there, there's systems now where you can actually add new commands to Siri, right? Yes. So I'm just trying to think in terms of integration between the overlay and this thing. Theoretically, could one set up a system where they could go, bow, 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 <laughs> and that would uh, activate the thing that actually plays an uh, air horn noise? Ooh, that would be interesting. <laughs> hey, Siri. Bow, bow, bow. Bow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't understand that. Would you like to Google search for brow, 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 brow? Brow, brow, brow. Okay, I think that's correct. Bingo, okay. So, so. what I need to do is add a bridge to my home bridge connection here. Let's just move this down in here so you can see it. And so we've added, this is the username, this is the port, this is the pin. You can see that because this isn't going to stay this way for long. And then we add our accessory named Magic Home LED Strip. We don't know what the IP of ad address of it is of it yet. And we don't, and I do know what type of, uh, what type of LED strips I've got too. They are red, green, blue, and white. So that needs to be... And also white? Yeah, singular white. That's the difference. There is RGB, RGB lights, RGBW lights, and then RGBWW. The WW being cool white and natural white. Hmm. And RGBWW.lights.com. Yeah. <laughs> so what we need to do next is get some power into this 
little person here. And for that, I have brought along a power adapter somewhere around here. Here we are. Now, these don't be aware that these don't come with their own power adapters. I forgot mine, uh, and so I borrowed one from Corey. Hi, Corey. Is it, is it just like a USB power thing, or what no? It? It's actually a it's a barrel plugged one, and oh. just like the barrel plugs that we got here at the office to power our LEDs, I'm going to need one of these guys to turn that into just standard wires. So the internal is going to be. That's interesting. I need to find out which one is negative and positive on this thing, because on this, negative is the inside and positive is the outside mm. of the barrel. So let's just, where are you? There you are. I learned something interesting today. What did you learn, Beach? Apparently, as of 2015, <clears throat> you know how you can go sudo shutdown dash r now? Yeah. If you go sudo shutdown dash r capital F. Mm -hmm now it forces a fisk on every volume when it restarts oh yeah that's kind of useful it's kind of very useful <sighs> yeah the fisking is like a scan disk or a check disk um i i have always referred to it as f disk yeah oh yeah I've, no. f s c k fisk It's so much more fun to refer to it to refer to it as fisking. To go fisking yourself, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Wait, no. That's some good continuity. Yeah, so according to this thing, it's all uh, continuous. It's, it's backwards. So I just have to remember that positive is negative. And negative is positive. Oh shit. <laughs> Where's that unsafe cable again? What? That's that, uh, was it in, in 30 Rock, where Dr. Spichemin has the folder? He's like, oh, I did this backwards. Well, I'll just remember who's supposed to get the liver and who's supposed to not. Yeah. Who's supposed to <laughs> donate the liver. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing bad could come I'll of just, this. I'll just remember that it's the opposite of what it says in the document. See, really, just swap the two livers. Put them both back in. That doesn't make any sense. Also, also I, 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 I feel, yeah, I don't want to correct you, but I feel like I think you meant Dr. Spaceman. <laughs> <laughs> so if I, yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add my wires right now, and I'm going to use color coding to remind me which is which. Black this time is negative. It's like you're pulling out licorice. Is a little bit like that. In that most people probably would not like the taste of this. This wiring. Okay. Wires go in. Happiness in the form of electricity comes out. PG and E, if you want to run with that slogan, you can, you're welcome to have it. PG and E. Let a little bit of happiness come out. You know what? I'm gonna actually untangle this cord. That's horrifying. Oh, what did we do to this? What did it do to deserve this knot? Okay, that's better. And just a small mm -hmm. knot here. Okay, I think I can at least unplug the... That's actually a good point. I'm assuming with the, uh, with the f a fancy internet lock or, or a, a, a smart lock, there's some sort of backup system if the power goes out or something. Yes, the, the fancy internet lock that I personally own, uh, we'll need, we need to do power down that Raspberry Pi for a moment. Has a key? You, yes, it attaches to the back of the lock so that uh, you can still just use the key normally. Mm. It's like it, it, it comes with a large hammer. It's the backup <laughs> system. 
All right, let's test this to make sure that we're getting the right voltage right now. There we go. Black is black. Want my baby back. It's gray, it's gray. Since you went away, oh no. What can I do? Cause I'm, I'm getting 12.16 volts. Also, I'm blue. Okay, good. And that's true. If it's, uh, if Star Trek has taught me anything, when your door loses power, it just automatically unlocks. Yeah. You got to work out. Yeah, yeah, you got to watch that. <laughs> Including the airlocks. Yeah. That seems like a poor... I mean, I don't know. Like, if you're trapped in a room and all the power goes out, I wouldn't want to continue being trapped in that room. I'd like to be able to get out. I wouldn't want to be trapped in the Right. Room. Well, That's fair too. You, you need to engage the ethical constraints, I guess. <laughs> oh, God, yes. I have an argument with the computer about letting me out of the brig. <laughs> I, I love that moment. That was really just kind of amazing. But still, I was like, really? really? You, have to, you have to argue your way out? She hacked it. She outlogic the computer? Well, she didn't outlogic it. She yeah. just basically said, hey, wouldn't you think I should get out? And it's like, well, no, it'll kill you. And it's like... Verbal hacking. Yeah, but shouldn't you let me out anyway? I'm going to die. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so this supposedly has power, but apparently it doesn't. I am dying for the chat window to catch up with what's actually going on right now because... <laughs> For whatever reason, it seems like. Hmm. It seems like it just stops. The Raspberry Pi? No, the the Twitch chat. Just generally, it just I'm waiting for it to be like, oh yeah, here's the, uh, uh, here's what's currently going on in chat. And I'm like, sure, and then it just gets to a certain points like, and I'm done showing you chat now. Here's the last message. It's been that way for ten minutes. No one has typed anything else. Maybe, maybe they're all just being quiet. That's what I keep thinking. And so I'm like, everyone's so engrossed in what you're doing that I'm like, that can't be right. <laughs> there are so many people who aren't actually watching this. Yeah, not that interesting. What the heck? Okay. Oh. Fleming Sloth says, I'm trying. I'm typing as fast as I can. I'm not even waiting for context or understanding before I put things down. <laughs> That's good. What more could he do? What more do I, you I want? see you all now. I have to keep restarting the Twitch app every so often. What do you need? Uh, my, oh, there they are. My roll of cables. If it was a very thin snake, it would have bit you. <laughs> God damn it. It was a very thin snake on a coil. <laughs> it oh, could glow in the dark. It's a very... It's a very specialized evolution uh, adaptation. It's uh, a snake that has evolved to look exactly like a row of LED lights. It doesn't, it doesn't consume any, any... It's amazingly fast that it adapted to that yeah. specific... You know, there's like the thing with like the pigeons that get darker when there's more pollution. But this one, this uh, a snake became flat and rolled itself up. Yep. And was uh, like, you know what I need to do is I, I need to disguise myself as, as a bunch of uh, electrical components. I know what I'll do. I'll, I'll have my ancestors mate with one of these <laughs> and wait for it to slowly trickle down the evolutionary chain. Okay, so I'm going to just snip this uh, shrink tubing off the top here. I always hate doing that to something I get in the mail like this because I'm like, this is very final. Oh, yeah, no, this is fine at all. This is all very, very... Are you taking that lead right off? Or? Yep, that's what I want. Aha. Oh, I see. Free headers. <laughs> I was like, those pins aren't going to go in anywhere, are they? Well, they don't have to. No. Uh, so what do we got here? Red, white, blue, and... Sure. Whoop. White, and we want... I like to keep my colors the same. Okay. It's important, Beach. No, I, I agree. 
Red, blue. It's kind of more of a. Oh, it is blue. I was like, the Red, white makes it look a little mauve. Green. Black. Extras. By your powers combined. Uh, a lit LED. Yeah. A string of LEDs. I am lit. This shit is lit, yo. So let's get the black in the black. Should not slide all the way in. It's very shallow. Oh, these might be. These pins might be too big. Really? Yeah. I think they might be. So that's okay. That just means we can use the breadboard for this. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah, that'll work. RGB white snake. It's <laughs> a good line. I like that. I'm a fan. Ooh, that hopefully that's not too shallow. Let's go. Okay, starting with white on that channel there. And then B is blue. Hey, that works out well. Then R is green. That didn't make any sense. Uh, next is green and then black. Green. Yeah, this is going to turn on and just be like a second black. sun. Just <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I can only hope. Okay, let's just do a little continuity testing here. So for for people at home who may not be uh, that familiar with um, electronic stuff, what is a breadboard? That's an interesting question. I'm not sure how best to describe it. A breadboard is something that's used in prototyping circuits. It uh, has channels that go in a certain in directions and uh, allow you to like wire up a circuit without having to solder things together. So it's just like a long series of holes. Yeah. And each one of those holes in a column is connected to each other, but not to anything in the row. Exactly. And so therefore it's like, oh, I need to connect these five or six things to these different between channels. So rather than being like, I have to wire these things all together to one wire, it's like, no, no, I just put it in one end and there's a whole wire down there you can just basically tap into. Yeah, tap into and tap out of. Yeah. Thank you. That's a much better description than I was able to give. <coughs> to be f I didn't know what a breadboard, like how it operated, because I just saw people plugging shit in, and I'm like, I guess it figures out where to go, because I'd never actually looked at one before. So mm -hmm. when you said, oh, it's all channels, I'm like, oh, that's instantly, it's like swim lanes, right? Yeah. You can, everything stays in its lane. So that's some continuity. Chat Chad says that you're, that those are going the wrong way. That it should be. Oh, the other direction? 90 degrees. I think you're probably right. Conversely, I also don't think that these pins are going deep enough to. Make contact? Yeah. The channels are horizontal, not vertical. Oh, ho. Now there's my, there's my problem. Unless Canadian breadboards are different. <laughs> uh, this is, uh, yeah. This is uh, kind of a, a lumberjack breakfast kind of breadboard we got going on here. Can, can I mention this is literally my first time using it for anything? Anything? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Okay. So that's an interesting. Uh, yeah. I guess that these pins are too short to get into. So they're too short on to get into side. the breadboard. And your yeah. other things are too big to get into the... It's very or hard. too thick. That's okay, though, because this is only going to live connected to this piece. So we're just going to strip and... Uh, strip and stick? Yep. That's what I feel like doing. Uh, let's do it from the back end. Yeah, because they're already out there. You can just snip that connector off. Where are my snips? They are in here. Where are my snips? They just live in this drawer. I can lock all the drawers. You can get inside of my drawers. Ding, 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 ding,
connecting. There we go. All right. So let's wire these guys up in their respective holes. And then we can see if this, if it takes an output to get this going. So V plus, good, go to there. It's no problems. So, I mean, this thing is very screwed up. And uh, that's bad. Well, the super block. Mm hmm. Um, is corrupted. And oh my God, is it Bizarro Super Block? <laughs> Luther. And it's um. Computer am working fine. <laughs> sure is. So I thought. If zero m equal one. <laughs> output true. I took this. I was reading about this one dude who was like, "Hey, you know, you can, you can, um, you can literally." You're not supposed to be able, and this is going to bug everyone because I'm going to keep seeing Fisk and I don't care. You can Fisk a root file system that you boot into. Normally what you would do is you would connect it up to another Linux system or you'd boot from another system or whatever, right? And then you'd be like, now I can Fisk the thing that I normally can't access because you're not supposed to be able to Fisk a mounted system because that's dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, and But what happens if you're in a position where you can't, you can't uh, do that. You can't avoid. You just can't even. Like, you need to be able to do that. Well, this person describes a method. And this is from way back in 2014. There is a method to do it. Um, and you can do that by doing a dry run mode. And if you do dry run, it will let you know that there are no critical files that have been damaged. And all it does is let you know, here's what I found. But you can't actually change anything. And then he discovered there's actually another way you can do it by putting your root partition into read-only mode. And then uh, once you do that, you can reboot, switch to run level one, and then you can fix your file system from there. And it's like, I'm like, okay, rad. Um, have never had to do that before. And I'd have to change it back from uh, read-only mode later. And I'm like, ah, sk shit. Can't you just completely wipe it and reinstall? That is probably the better thing to do. Uh, and it would be simpler, except I would need access to Ian's machine, and of course he is busy in what he's doing, and I don't want to start dicking around with s stuff on here while he while things are going on. Would there. you anyway. like to? So I'm yeah. not doing anything right now. Yeah, I guess fact, we could next, do that. The next step, it, it won't take you long to get this set up. I mostly just wanted to see if I could find a way around it, but when I when I ran when I ran Fisk on it, it it said, uh, oh yeah, your super block is effed up, and I'm like, I had to do this with a previous system, and I hate this because you can't. They, there's multiple copies of your super block that are littered all over your hard drive as a safety measure. Uh, I've never once in my life been able to figure out how to access the other super blocks so it'll so it'll like fix itself. I can't figure that out. I don't I don't Linux that well, <laughs> and I've been doing it for years, but I've never been able to figure out how to do it properly. So normally what happens is like, oh well, I guess I mount it from another drive and I fisk it until it's fixed, and then I. Then I go back to doing what I was doing. It's weird that a lot of Linux is just learning how to fix the problems <coughs> that you've made for yourself. Yeah, pretty much. And that's, I, I mean, I don't know if that's just fun Linux, in its own way. I don't know yeah. if that's just the Linux thing. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. seems to happen a fair that's amount a with Windows and also okay. Mac. I was going to say, a lot of life is just yeah. fixing problems that you've made for yourself. Yeah. yeah. Keep that in mind, everybody. When you stop making problems for yourself, that's when you die. It really just all comes down to the fact <laughs> that's that you've, the final problem that you need to solve for yourself. You've probably made some well, poor that's, choices, that's, and that's the problem that you can't solve. But. You know, now that I think about it, it's like what Cam always says about XCOM. He's like, "You've already lost this game of XCOM. You just don't know that you lost it an hour ago." <laughs> and that's kind of like it is with life. It's like. You already know that you fucked up major like in 10 years from now. You just don't know right now that you <laughs> fucked up major 10 years from now. But you've already done it. You can't undo it. And you can't undo it, so you're going to have to deal with it when the time comes around. So, so learn how to fisk while running yep. is what we're, just, what we're saying here. Take, take a running fisk. You're going to look back at the day that you uh, tried to reinstall Linux on a Raspberry Pi. Be like, that was the day. That was the day it all changed. That's <laughs> when it all went poorly. So it's interesting that you mention uh, uh, Steve Wozniak earlier. Mm. Because my first foray into home automation 
was on the Apple II when I'd bought a book from a library sale. And it was a like a three quarter of an inch thick book that was literally just the source code for in basic for home automation software. Oh, or, you had to actually type in yourself. Yeah. So you, you would go to the bookstore, or in this case, the library, buy a book that contained a program, input it yourself, and then attempt to I configure some, it. I had some of those books, that, but they were like games. It was like, you know, you type in all this stuff. And yeah. By the, once you have typed in, you know, five pages worth of stuff, you have tic-tac-toe, <laughs> or whatever. Like, yeah, that's, like, that was how software was, one of the two ways software was distributed, on disks and via paper. So I'm going to download Raspy and Stretch without the desktop stuff on it. I okay. imagine you're probably fine with that, eh? That's the one I grabbed from home. So, so. so did you type out all the stuff? And get <laughs> no. home automation on your Apple II? No, because there was a lot of hardware wiring that you had to do as well. Ah. And I think I also had a Mac at that point and realized this is probably not going to be relevant for very long. <laughs> now, can I get access to the chat again? Unable to connect to chat. Don't know what I'm doing wrong. So, All right, trying to connect to the chat. Okay. <laughs> try thinking about what the paper is. Snapchat. Oh, just gotta snap that chat. Millennials love lemon juice. What? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. What beach? Millennials love lemon juice. Why? Is that like a? Something I'm hoping to get started. Oh, yeah, no, <laughs> it's that, true. That, sounded, that, just... that sounded like a mnemonic for something. <laughs> <laughs> like LL Cool J. Uh, yeah. Like... <laughs> yeah, that's how you remember LL Cool J's name. Millennials, Millennials love, love lemon, lemon juice. juice. You know, LL Cool J. <laughs> uh, God, I bet the chat's laughing their ass off of that remark, and I can't tell. <laughs> There's, there's a lot of confusion. <laughs> there's some people confirming that their status as millennials that love lemon juice. And then some of them are wailing and gnashing their teeth. Okay. Where did that go? There you are. Power barrel. Whoa! -ho! Look okay. at all them lights. Ooh. Okay. So, so, the lights do work. Ow. <laughs> Always look at your row of, or your, or your roll your roll of lights. So the next, you know, this might actually work okay. as a. It's almost definitely not a snake. Jesus. Yeah. This might actually work as a uh, as LED panels. We'll have to look into that. Next step is finding out what the IP address is that this little Wi-Fi controller is on. The way most of these Chinese devices work is that they have their own Wi-Fi network that they broadcast. So it's and, not actually joining ours. Yeah, so you use that to, to configure it, and then you can fix it. So let's see here. I guess I probably have to also download the terrible app, too. <laughs> Magic Home. All right. Download the app Magic Home Pro from App Store or Google Play Store or scan the QR code below. Turn on the bulb, run the app, and register slash log in your Magic Home account. Press plus button to connect your controller to Wi-Fi router. Enjoy. Ooh. Okay. You, wait. Router, you router enjoy? <laughs> you enjoy. Uh, okay, so let's have a look here. May I? Yeah, no, you can do what you need. Okay. That's the flash. That's the sawn off. There we go, sheep. All right. Oh, great. So I don't actually need to, I just need the IP address. I don't need the actual device itself. So the IP address for this, just judging from what I can currently see that are uh, Wi-Fi networks, LED net 5A82D4. Sounds reasonable. Gonna guess that that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Why can't I see what your IP address is? Oh, dial to join the network. It's an unsecured network. Gasp. 
Right, I'll need to have it join our network. <laughs> we, need, we need to join the set of lights to our network. Yes, Okay. so that it can talk to Homebridge. Makes sense. So we need to get the app for that. Magic Home Pro. Oh, well, it must be good then. Yeah, it's got the word pro in it. Mm -hmm. It's a lifestyle app. Does, now that the, when the lights are connected to our network, they're totally going to like get up and start hacking things, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. If they do, you're welcome to throw them out the window. <laughs> All right, and now we wait for that software to download. All right, so, so this thing's the thing with the little web server that's communicating secrets back to foreign governments, right? Correct. Okay. Good thing we don't have any secrets. That's and we're connecting that to our network. Yeah. Already bandwidth, apparently. I mean, I'm using I'm, bandwidth here. I am also it's using a good bandwidth point. Every, here. Everyone is using, we're using bandwidth to talk to you right now. <laughs> I'll just uh, turn off my connection to the Wi-Fi for the moment while we get the app. Touch ID to install. And oh, installing. Argentum Flare. Yes, I guess earlier today I said I was, probably wasn't going to be on Tinker Taylor because I didn't have any Raspberry Pi stuff to work on. Um, that's literally what I said on Checkpoint. Oh. And then, but I thought, I will probably end up being behind the camera. And then Heather said that she was working camera. So I'm like, I know I'm definitely not going to be here. And then partway throughout the day, Graham was like, Ian should have a co-host. Should you co-host? I'm like, ah, oh, shit, I don't know. And you, you said, it's like, fine. Ian should have a co-host. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should buy Ian a co-host. So I found out why I, could, I didn't have access to the internet. Even though I was connected to Wi-Fi. Oh, was it doing that thing again? I was connected to this thing. Oh. <laughs> yes. So, set you up a new controller that. Great. Confirm. So, you were connected to, like, the secret Chinese internet. <laughs> <laughs> that, connect, so, that, that joins all uh, bizarre Chinese <laughs> devices. Remember how, like, The Simpsons was Secret Pirate Island, yep. a.k.a. Hong Kong, and it's, like, secret Chinese internet. But there's no <laughs> a.k.a. for that, is there? No. A.k.a. The Chinese, the Chinese internet. internet. It's behind Ooh. the Great Firewall. So you can make it go up and down. Uh, That's kind of neat. Change device type. Don't look at it. God, what am I doing? So this is RGBW. What? I wonder if it's more reliable than our uh, the Bluetooth ones we've got in the other room. That are. Mm -hmm. uh, the connection is a little wonky. Ooh. We need them on like. I mean, it would. In retrospect. Having them on like IR control would have been just fine. Oh, there we go. So uh, now I've got the well, just line of sight, turn on, turn off with a. Yeah, I mean the problem is the problem in here is that all the TVs are on IR. Like IR bounces a little bit. There's that too. We need like laser control, <laughs> or like uh, or like secured 2.4 gigahertz range stuff. Or hey Siri. Or a cable. <laughs> I'm a rave. Yes. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Let me, uh, I, might be, I could probably turn off the lights. Yeah. Oh, yeah, then you could really see it. Mm. Oh, hold on here. Get out drop mix. <laughs> All right, ready? Yeah. Can't play roundabout. Oh. Damn. This song is protected by DRM. Could I play it? Uh, let's see. Have I got some music here that's not DRM'd? Let's see. What's a song? Oh. What's a song? There we go. Desert bus theme. But don't want to add... Nope, this is the wrong one. But it does flash along with the music. So that's pretty what, good. That's what this app can do for us. Uh, let's not use the app. Because that's the whole point, is to uh, ooh, pump up the volume. <laughs> it's heart, like old cuts from the 90s. So, uh, device, we need to configure it so that it goes on to 
the IP address. Okay, let's change. What are you doing, Mitchell? What are we? What are we doing? Okay. <clears throat> So I need to make sure that I'm able, ah, connect light to Wi-Fi network. Hmm. So by, um, with those, because it's got those breaks every three lights or whatever, mm -hmm. um, in what you could do is cut off, say, you know, like 15 lights. Yep. And then another 15 lights, and another 15 lights, and another 15 lights, and then you just have to wire in series exactly. along the sort of along the bottom and top. Yeah, or get those little connectors and make it easy on myself. Right there, so there's there's side by side connectors that you can get in. Yeah. I wonder okay. how bright that would be as a whole thing. That that's what I'd like to know. <laughs> I'll I will let you know when I do it. Okay. Da, da, da. I gotta DD this stuff, don't I? Uh, uh, you don't have to, I don't think. Yeah. There's a little program called Etch that you can download. Right, Etch, yeah. I don't have it installed okay. on this one. Right. <sighs> you, need back, you need this back? No, nope, not yet. Okay, I'm gonna keep rolling here. Oh, wait a second. I might actually. <laughs> Look out, we got a badass who needs his computer around here. <laughs> I don't know what that was on my on my respect, but here we are. Can you uh, attempt to connect to, uh, well, maybe I'll just do it. Yeah. 10. Dot. Wait, no. Oh, you got 190. I need to actually change uh, addresses. To, oh, no, this is going to drop me from. I've already done downloading, so. Yeah, this is going to drop me from the internet yep. for a second, so. <coughs> <sighs> We're going to go to uh, LED nets. That's um, wires. If that cable is still around, you can connect, you could wire up to that. Mm. I mean, I've, I've currently got the Raspberry Pi. Oh, right. Currently. Uh, so, we need to join. Join 10.10.123.3. 10.123.3. Oh, and the password is admin admin. Oh, well, for safety's sake. Or is it? Or is it? Okay, this is interesting. Ah, Nimda is the password. Not in my data array. Nimda. Oh, that's all Chinese. Good thing it has a button for English. Thank God. <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll, I'll show you guys what this looks like once we get it plugged back in, but I need to set it to connect to things. Select mode. STA mode. What is STA? STA setting is... Serial transfer? Probably. TV setting. Oh, it needs to join. It wants. That's how you get it to join a, a network. You tell it to. Here's the network you need to belong yep. to. I see. So AP plus STA mode is what I want. Oh, station. Yep. And restart. Okay. Wait for it to come back up. Mm -hmm. I couldn't see that it was on because the link light is just very, very dim. Or the power light. Oh, wow, yeah. It's almost invisible. You should drill that out. Yeah, that might not be a bad idea. Not today, though. Mm. Rebooting was successful. Okay. So apparently it was successful. Still taking its time. So now it's connected to... No, not yet. It 
it's still might still be uh, doing its thing. Might still be rebooting. I doubt I broke it. <laughs> you think it could use the enormous pile of lights that it's attached to to do some status updates and indicate that it's on? Yeah. <laughs> Spell out some words. Help me, Father. <laughs> yeah, spell out its current status in binary. Yeah. Just like ASCII code. That would be more, that would be good. Okay, let's uh, let's renew our lease on this. Let's forget it and then see if we get back on. I'm just a finished. Connecting to this Chinese Wi-Fi, and I say, forget you. I'm not funny. <laughs> <laughs> that was... <laughs> wow. I have enough of it to... I was like, what is he trying to... Oh. <laughs> hmm. So it's taking its sweet time coming up. I may just actually fully reboot this with power out. Turns out, turns out a, line, a row of LED lights doesn't have the most CPU power. <laughs> <laughs> OK, light goes on. I wonder if there's a way to reset these things if you fully hoop them. The yeah, well, there's an, the RST here. Oh, yeah. That's probably a One would like, assume a, like that that's an RCT. Yeah. That must be where you reset from. Yeah. One would assume. So, yeah, it's, it's obviously outputting. Okay. Wi Fi has been changed to LED. Tap OK to reload. Lights on. Okay. That's. Hey, it's there. Ten, ten, one, two, three, three. That should be working. Oh, rebooting successful. STA setting. AP. Nope, those aren't working. Oh. How to restore factory settings. How do I repair, restore factory settings, Beach? Power on the controller. Okay. Wait three to five seconds and then power off the controller. Okay. You're going to love this. At the end of the fourth time when you turn on the controller, it will emit strobe for a few seconds. After that, it will become fully bright, at which point the reset is complete. So wait, I just have to turn it off and then turn it on again four times. Yeah, wait three to five seconds and then power it off. So, and then repeat that over and over. So it has nothing to do with pushing that reset button. I have no idea. Because <laughs> it literally does not say that here. Let's just hold the reset button down for a few seconds. Because that usually works. To yeah, return there's... to factory settings, return to factory. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So one, two, three, four, five. It's off. Put it back in. Okay, then off. Then in. Then off. Three, four, five. And in. Then out again. There we go. Oh, now we've gone full strobe. Okay. Hey. And when it is fully lit, then it is complete. Good. I can't believe that worked. No, neither can I. Once you've reset it, you should be able to see its Wi-Fi IP LED net star 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 again under your mobile device's Wi-Fi setting. Yep. If not, please restart your Wi-Fi. Wait for a while, and you will see it. There we go. Uh, and that's it, and we're in. That was one of those things that was like really stupid instructions that turned out to be exactly correct. And now it's cycling through all its different colors. Yeah. It's in demo mode. The password is empty. Uh, the password is... The password is correct. Obtain an IP address automatically. Enable. DNS server address. <coughs> eight dot eight dot eight dot eight dot eight. Huh. Can't change that unless you do it manually. Disable. 
8.8.8.8.8. Enable and save. Configurations will take effect after restart. Restart. Some of my favorite um, instructions written on stuff was when I bought this. Uh, <laughs> did, whoa, did it do it? It appears to. Okay. System. Hello, system. I mean, it's on, right? So it says, in order to connect to the Wi-Fi network, run the newest app, which you did. Click mm -hmm. plus, register, log in your Magic Home account, which you did. Go to your Wi-Fi settings on your mobile device. Find the controller SSID, which you did, and connect to it. And if not, reset your controller. But once you've connected to it on your mobile device, open the app, connect the device to the Wi-Fi network, choose your router, and log in your password. Like, ensure the router is 2.4 gigahertz. Oh. Hmm. I don't know if we're on we're a mixed mode network. That I think we might be N only, or 5 gigahertz N only. <laughs> OK. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, that would be no mm. channel one two point four. You're right. We are on a two. We do have a two point four available here. Um, yeah, we, there's like a we preferentially like, connect to five. Yeah, there's like an iPad two connected to this network. Mm -hmm. It's definitely it, there's definitely two point four. Around. That's right. Ah, <sighs> all right. But yeah, I bought this um, uh, uh, Milanese loop style. Uh, I mean, it is a Milanese loop, essentially. It's the same style. Actually, Paul, do you see any new devices connected to the network? Uh, That's good. Check. And so the, you should, you're supposed to be connected to the internal network now. Right? Correct, yes. The documentation sent with this watch strap was extensive, and it gave me two options for seeking redress if I had a problem with it, and one of them was contact the Amazon. <laughs> contact the Amazon. And I was like, that actually sounds pretty sweet. I'm, 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 I would prefer to contact the Amazon than contacting you directly. Uh, okay. I see. I see something called New Host Free. Let's give that one a try. That doesn't seem to be it. Can you ping it? It's a good point. Because if it's hooked up but nothing's... I mean, I don't think they'd turn off ICMP, would they? Host is down, timeout, timeout, timeout. Oh, I thought it would return a thing at least. Okay. So it's not that. What kind of a product is this anyway? Like. <laughs> No, I mean, I don't mean like in a shitty way. I mean literally like, oh, how to set up with Alexa. That's interesting. Is it? Teheran is you, right? That's correct, yeah. Why do you have two IP addresses at the moment? That's interesting. That is very interesting. That's you at 104 and also at 200. I am currently at 200. I think I was 154 before. It might have dropped that. Oh, you might still have a lease for it? Yeah. I did not see anything that looks like... Like anything that's... Yeah, okay. There's nothing that says like LED or anything like that. Okay. Oh, it came back up. And, okay, work mode, ST, okay, because it is an AP mode right now. I think I just need to be a little bit more... Uh, Isn't, wouldn't AD, AP mode be... Access point. That, yeah. That means be it accessing an active access point. Right? Yeah, so I think I need to put it in STA mode. Let's give that a try. Save and restart. Now, if you do that, will it, it's going to use all the STA settings, obviously. Yep, which should be... Correct by now. Yeah, well, I mean, at this point, you can't tell. Yep. Because we're already in STA mode. Okay. Or at least it should be soon, whenever it finishes rebooting itself. I mean, I've uh, you know talking about the uh, the instructions thing. Uh, I think I've told you guys about. I don't know if I've told Chad about this before, but I um, I have a ch I have a computer chair that I've had for quite a while, mm. and one day I was I was 
and I really I quite like it. And I was one day I was sitting and working and stuff, and I leaned back and fall over backwards. The entire back of the chair broke. Yeah, it's like sheared <laughs> off from the from the the uh, the seat. Uh, and so I fell over backwards, and I was like, "Wow!" And I, I looked, and in, in, like the bolts that attached the back of the chair to the seat of the chair had sheared off. Wow! And I was like, "Wow, uh, well that sucks. I guess I'll have to get another chair." And so I searched for this particular chair because I liked it. And I was like, "Maybe I can get another one." And then only to find uh, that there was a recall on this chair, like a year or two ago. Okay. Uh, because of this exact problem. Ah. <laughs> well uh and so i was like oh okay that's cool uh i will phone this you know phone the number and be like hey i have this chair and it broke um uh and then they, they like are gonna send those send a replacement part uh and i'm like great i'll phone the send, and they're like okay here's what you do so i i i phone them and i here's what you do send an email with your like your uh uh, proof of purchase mm. uh, and your address to this email address. And it was like some kind of shady uh, looking, like it was just like... Uh, letters and numbers. It, yeah, it was like a bunch of, let, you know... To stuff, this spam harvester, yeah. <laughs> to this email address. I'm like, uh, okay, well, here's here's the thing. Here's all my info. Here's the chair. Uh, here's the chair. And I set it off. Um, and then... A couple days later, I get an email back, the and the entirety of the email, uh, it's just like, you know, reply to my email, and the entire body of it is, we will send parts. <laughs> huh. And I was like, oh, I, I hope they're chair parts. <laughs> <laughs> we will send parts. pro parts. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and then, yeah, and then like, you know, three weeks later or so, I get a little package that has a replacement, just the one little back piece and, like, a new attachment thing that's got, like, four larger screws <gasps> instead of just the two screws that held it on. Yeah. And it worked great. Okay. So they sent me the right parts. <laughs> oh. By the way, my headlight burned out, and mm -hmm. that was part of that set that I bought for us to share. Can I get yours back so I can return them? <laughs> what? I don't remember. Also, you owe me for packs. I do. Paul, do we have any new, new, any new devices on the network? I will check. No, my headlight burned out. Remember I bought that pair yeah, because yeah. I needed one and you needed one? Yeah. So I'm like, I'll buy them in a pair because they're cheaper. So I did. And then I had to buy another one to replace the other one, which I thought, this sucks. So I was like, well, if i got to return the one that burnt out, I'm pretty sure it's the same I'm, one I share in a package I'm, with you. I'm using it. Yeah. <laughs> so. uh, you need you it need etch, right? Etcher, yeah. yeah. I like Etcher. It's a it's a nice little program. Very streamlined for, you know. I mean, yeah. it's a single operation thing. Well, it's it's, a, it's something that runs DD, I'm sure. Yeah. But I like that it's also a very. It's designed to be like you can't screw this up, because we've taken all the guesswork out of it, and we won't let you write to a thing that's important. We know exactly what you want to do. Yeah. There's something called LWI PLPC. L W I P L P C. L W I P L P C. Yeah, I, think, I don't think that's the same thing. No, that sounds like it might be though. It's one one forty four. Okay. Nope, that's not it. Huh. Okay, so maybe it's just not connecting. Which would be unfortunate, but that's. That's why these things should come with dip switches. Yeah. <laughs> so you can manually set your IP address. I mean, we could do that, actually. Yeah. There's nothing stopping us. That's a good point. If we reset it and just give it an IP, mm -hmm. one that we know we're not using, then you'll know where to connect yep. to it again. Also, at home, don't you have all of your home bridge stuff? Yeah, everything yeah. is set up it's, with it's static. static leases. Makes sense. There we go. Getting real good at that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's connect back to, come on, LED net. <laughs> 10, oh, okay, 10 dot, 10, uh -huh. So Ian has a, um, uh, one of those little uh, 
power adapters you can throw in your suitcase where you can plug a few different things plus a couple USB ports into it, which travels with him. So that's why for the laptop, he has that to plug all his stuff into, including like the Raspberry Pi and whatever else he needs. <coughs> in this case, I think the Pi is on its own adapter at the moment. Okay, so just so I'm aware, this is this is correct here, beat right? Uh, yeah. Okay. No. No. Uh, that. That's why. Yeah. That was the problem then. Actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. Never mind. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Heather's got it zoomed in, <laughs> so we can barely see the screen. <laughs> As we enter the, the, the passwords. As we enter the password in the background. Paul, what's a safe, <laughs> what, what, what's a safe IP address for us to use? 253. Great. This should be nothing at the other end of the spectrum. Yeah. Subnet mask, uh, 255. Oh God. That's awesome. Zero. Zero. I know it's all blurry, but it was still like, this is good OPSEC. Yep. <laughs> all right, restart. <sighs> 253 is what we decided, right? Yep. Okay, because we got to put that back in the Raspberry Pi now. So, we're going to go. I uh, should be viewable once again by the NDI. Be viewable. 253. Right. Oh, yeah, it showed that terminal, yeah? Yeah. Uh, the terminal or the... Oh, let's go full screen, actually, because that way we can show off the uh, what, what the thing looks like. What their interface looks like? Yeah. Hey, hey, neat. Well, that's not... At all what you're showing. No. That one must have not reconnected. i uh, just go to terminal then. I'll put things in the corner. Ooh, goodbye. Uh, I was refreshing it to okay. configure itself right. Or, or not. Oh, there it goes. Okay, cool. It takes a second to connect. Great. Um... Yeah, so that's kind of what it looks like. It's a very fancy. Uh, yeah, yeah. You get your English and Chinese, uh, and I'm just. It's not... crazy that something like that has like it built in. Not only like a little web server. It's got a little web server. It's got this whole like UI that they've built. It's actually quite nice. Yeah. It's better than a lot of routers that I've used. And that it's like <laughs> it's it looks nice in English too. Yeah. Because one of my big frustrations, mm -hmm. they always use like a. They always use a the the world's worst serifed font to write okay. things in English on. Can you switch away for just one moment, Paul? Thank you, because I want to check to see if I can connect to this. To the, and I don't want to show the password off in case we've. I don't have to think of a new one. Yeah. Two five three. Hmm. Oh, no, no, that's still not loading. Unless it, no, no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. PTM private. Hmm. Right now, just trying to connect to that. That's, yeah, that's what I'm trying to get it to do. This is getting kind of warm, too. I do not see anything on the network on 253. Okay. Hmm. Well, hmm. Can I still connect to... Okay, I can't connect to it anymore, so it should be working correctly. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, don't, don't, don't worry. Uh, we'll just get the chat to come up with a new password for us. That's good, yeah. <laughs> when you're having a problem thinking of a password, crowdsource! Yep. I'll just take one letter from all the letters that they, that they suggest. That's actually not a terrible idea, but th I don't think there's an ideal amount of... Uh, that actually lowers the amount of letters unless they choose to type all of them. If we draw from a common pool, it means that it's only something that existed in that pool. Well, let's see, just for fun, if uh, it's recognized mm -hmm. by Homebridge. So let's 
go back into the Raspberry Pi. Raspberry is the password. Home bridge is the command. It launches. So oh, okay. So it looks like it's... It can see it. It looks like it can see it. So what we got to do now, yeah, uh, nice. let's zoom in on the phone here, if we can. If that makes sense. Let's go to the, the actual Homebridge app. All right, select an X. So let's cancel that. And so is there stuff that you can do from the app that you can't do from the web interface? Well, the idea ultimately is, I believe, to use the to use the app mm -hmm. to integrate it into. Yes, the apps <coughs> are very good at being at, at uh, right. Much better at controlling the the color interfaces better than a web interface would be. So, my understanding is, you okay. set up Homebridge on the Pi to to act as a HomeKit device, mm -hmm. and then. Once it's connected, then you tell Homebridge, now here is the thing I want you to control. Yeah, and they should all just be in there. Because you tell Homebridge in the configuration thing, you said, this is the thing I want you to start using. Yep. And you, I want you to and call it this. This is where it is. Right. So it might just be that the LED strip has chosen <laughs> to, to look like it's running. But is in fact not. I'm going to try. The LED strip has chosen a different yeah. master. I'm going to try one last time to get this running uh, on the network. You must first prove yourself worthy of the LED strip. <laughs> you must defeat its current owner. It's some guy in China, I guess. <laughs> Two, three, four, five. It's true. Is there any way that uh, Siri could control the Dreamcast? <laughs> Certain parts of it. Uh, there is actually a plugin for Homebridge that allows you to control the PS4 hmm. and know it, and be able to report whether or not it's on. Oh, so like an HDMI CEC type thing, or really? Yeah. Just, well, okay. no, it's based on the network and, and uh, Wake on LAN okay, so functionality. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I I, th I think it is. In fact, we could see if Corey's playing. PS4 right now. You could turn it off on her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she totally would. I mean, the, the Switch has that functionality in, in as much as you can't turn it off. You can just halt anything from being played. Well, you can turn it off remotely, too. Nice. <laughs> I don't have access to the parental controls thing on the Switch. Heather does. <laughs> this was a conversation that we never had. It's, it's technically her switch. It's not mine. So she gets to be in charge. <laughs> yeah. You know, sometimes, sometimes uh, King Koopa's got to lay the foot down on the Koopalings or yep. whatever. Yep. Actually, I do like the idea that uh, it's the, the problem. The problem is actually that the the LED light strip is is currently wild, <laughs> and so you have to you have to fight it for a bit and get it weaken weaken it, and then you can capture it. Are but we using AES or TKIP? AES, almost certainly. Okay, and yeah. WPA two PSKs. Yeah, I, we would be. Oh, for the Wi-Fi. Yeah. Almost certainly, I think, because it uh, would support it. Uh, one sec. Oh wow! It's, so it's saved the settings already. The settings it found, or yeah, tame VPN because I haven't entered these in yet. And so, despite the fact you resetting it, it was like, oh, this is oh yeah, because it sets it back to AP setting. That's its work mode, right? It says I'm going to set it back to whatever it was before. Yeah. And I don't have to edit out your STA settings at all. Yeah. 
I'll just leave those there because yep. I'm just going to reboot you into factory mode. Okay. So, yeah, that all seems correct. We've currently got nothing on 253, right? Uh, as far as I know, yes. Okay. Nothing on 253. Let's save that. Save it. 420, save it. I wonder if I might be overloading this. No, it's not getting as hot as it was before. It's sitting on a Ooh. bunch of LEDs, right? Wow. They're the ones who are putting out the heat. Okay, there we go. Now it's working. Uh, system Wi-Fi work mode. Let's put it in just STA mode. Well, let's double check our STA settings. That's not right. Oh, they're real different now, aren't they? Yeah. Please select your current Firefox network. This one, okay. Password is empty. That's fine. Let's give you a proper password. Yeah. I don't know if this your screen up right now. Yeah, that's. Thank you. I'm also not turning on the show password button. Like at this point, it's probably safe to show off. But yeah. Okay, uh, and enter. Okay, and do not save that login. And go back to just hit save. Configurations take effect after restart. But we haven't put it into any other mode yet. So it'll come back yeah. regardless. Should come back regardless. <coughs> there All we right. go. There it it's is. Back up. All right. Let's go back into the settings. Wait for it to load. Unless it's already loaded itself. Stop loading yourself. You know what? I'm now just going to check Chrome to see if, because sometimes that matters. Hmm. As long as the command you're trying to send to it is to cycle through all your colors, it's working real well. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Seems to not like this. It's just not connecting to the network. Yeah, and the problem is because it's such a, uh, because it's an obtuse device, there's no information that it gives back. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see here 192.168.1.253. Doesn't appear to be. Working when we're on BTM either. What do you think, Indeed? What if when it's in, it would be a, I don't think it makes sense to do this, but what if it, when it's in not AP mode, if it just says you can't run the, you can't run this anymore? And I'm like, that doesn't make sense because it would mean that every time you need to reconfigure it, you need to unplug it and reset it, mm -hmm. and then go through the... Uh, oh, hold on a second. Uh, admin nimda. So, came back up and brings itself into AP mode, but it's all the settings are correct. So let's try putting it into... What was the other one? Oh, it's in both. STA oh. mode now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. the choices it gives you are AP mode, STA mode, or AP plus SDA mode, which would mean that it advertises its own access point, but then also acts as a... Uh, Ooh, so the green link cable is on now. Oh, hey, look at that. I think, I think we're good. 
Yep, yeah. we're good. Hey, okay. You got there. All right. So let's I now. That off the edge. All right. I wouldn't be seeing it. Exactly. So let's go back to the phone. A breakthrough was discovered. Ah, I am seeing it in the, uh, my network sniffer here, though. Great. Let's see if it shows up in Homebridge. Add accessory. Don't have code. Yay. Can't scan. A thing code. happened. That a little complicated to explain <laughs> what just happened, but it was a good thing. So once you enter this code, it means that that HomeKit sees the pi. And yeah. it's like, yeah, I see that. And the Pi knows to go looking for this at 253. Mm, that should be. So maybe we need to restart HomeKit. Homebridge. Or Homebridge. OK, good. This is taking longer. Good. So Homebridge is just looking for anything advertising itself as as a device running on the network? So far. Yeah, I'm going to have a look at some other stuff here right now. Okay. Because I'm just trying to, I'm trying to figure out how, oh. <coughs> excuse me, how the, um, how Homebridge knows that this Wi-Fi controller is something that it should be concerned about. Yeah, and that <laughs> comes from the, that comes from the JSON, uh, config.json. Okay. So and that's the bonjour stuff, right? Like it's, it's advertising on the network what it's, Capabilities are mm -hmm. well. The Raspberry Pi is, but is the does the Wi-Fi controller actually have um, something built into it that says this is who I am, this is my IP, and this is what I this is what kind of device I am. I'm this magic home thing. Yeah, I think I'm wondering. I'm wondering if I need to be on a platform. I think. Well, isn't the thing with HomeKit that you need to configure it so that HomeKit knows the thing? And that's what the HomeBridge portion is. Yeah. Right. The HomeBridge. Yeah. yeah. So, so HomeBridge, you tell HomeBridge what it is, and then HomeBridge says, I will advertise this stuff yeah. for you. So yeah. I need to find out what the what the connections are for the bits here. Um, that is many magic home-based accessories, like in the following format, under the Accessories tab. So to catch up people who are <laughs> wondering what's going on, <coughs> we were having a problem with getting the little white box here, which is the Wi-Fi controller, getting this to talk to um, the our Wi-Fi in the office. Once this thing we could get, once we could get this thing to join the Wi-Fi, much like you join your phone or anything like that, once this could actually join the Wi-Fi. Uh, that's where we're at right now. Hey, it's it's now on the network. It's got an IP address, um, and it's like you can control the lights through me now. But that means we would have to use the Magic Home app to do that, yeah, which, which we could do through Ian's phone. We could use the Magic Home app and control the colors and stuff and do all that kind of thing. But that's not the end result. What we ultimately want to do is get. We want to get the Raspberry Pi, which is the black box on the desk. We want that to know about the white box. And then once the, once the Raspberry Pi <laughs> knows what the white box does, it'll be like, oh, well, I'll advertise that as a potential HomeKit device. And then you can use Apple's Home app to control it and integrate it into a whole suite of things. So Ian could actually integrate this to work with his IKEA lights to work with the smart locks, to work with a whole bunch of stuff in the house. Yeah. And why are we doing this? Because it's really cheap to do it this way. It's cheap and fun. Yeah. Yeah. Look at all the things that we're learning. So. The things I'm learning. Keep getting this accessory here. Though I think ultimately I might just, I might just buy the IKEA lights and start with that <laughs> like he did. It's a much easier way of doing things. Yeah, just to drop in and do it that way. Yeah. So. Hmm. Let's see what else we can do here. Next, add an accessory. And yeah, I think I think it's fair to say also because we can. Oh sure. Oh yeah. Half the time, all this stuff is, can we make it work? Yes, we can. Somebody else did, so we surely can. Yeah. 
I'm pretty sure like half the things that exist in the world that have Linux installed <coughs> in them were not created out of some need. I <laughs> they were more created out of can we do this? Yeah. Like my uh my seed box at home, um I finally got configured so it would detect what it was downloading from a website as opposed to that I had to go in, log in every time and tell it here's the things I want you to download. Now it just goes looks on a website and says, I will get it from here. That took me a month of trying to determine how the configuration was supposed to work. But one, like at, you know, an hour here and an hour there. But finally, when I figured it out and the lightning bolts hit, I was like, oh my god, yes, this, okay, now I understand how this works. But I'm still 10 steps away from getting it to work exactly how I want it to work. Mm. But uh, well, we'll, we'll see. Given more time. Given enough time, you're going to save so much time. Yeah, exactly, right? Hmm. What yeah. are you discovering? I'm wondering if I've if I've maybe confused it because by giving two uh, giving two home bridges the same information, like the one at home and the one yeah. here. Yeah. So I'm going to give the because the username for the bridge is uh, the MAC address or is a MAC address, and so I'm going to. Uh, Try a different MAC address now, in hopes that it will not. It will. You have, not to, you have to speak gently to the home bridge, <laughs> and or get confused. The MAC address of the. It's of this. Well, it's not actually that MAC address. It's yes. just. It's just a. A, a, MAC, a address. MAC address. Right. Okay. So, we're going to throw it off by one number. Okay. And hopefully that will work. Okay. Shut down res home bridge. Restart home bridge. And actually, let's also, while we're at it, change the pin from the default. Again, you can do that yourself or not. I kept mine at the default for the moment, but... Yeah, while you're trying to get everything up and running, sometimes it's easier to just have the pin be the, the thing that works across everything. Exactly, but I've never actually had two uh, devices mm. attempt to be all at the same time. It's at a home... It's true. A MAC address, theoretically, should be universally unique. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, there's no way it should be able to know that you have another device with that MAC address. It's mm -hmm. not like it's going out that far onto the, net, onto the Internet. But. Yeah. Okay. Aha! Nearby accessories. So here we go. Now it gets it. Now it sees that the home bridge is here. <gasps> Uncertified accessory. No problem. We're yeah, going anyway. to add it anyway. And then we do the 03145155. And if any of you connected to this at home before I did, I will murder you. Oh, at least they're on a delay. Adding home bridge. Home bridge added. My oh. new accessory is ready to use. That was the problem. Great. Next. Default room LED strip. Identify accessory. LED strip. So, so it got there. It, it knows what this is. Yes, it does. Yeah. It see, because, but it sees that from the... Uh, it's seeing that from the JSON configuration file. Because the JSON configuration file, when it sees something that's identified as this. Well, it's not even doing that. The JSON, I'm adding that to the JSON file, configuration oh, file. Okay. I'm telling it that there is an accessory called Magic Home, right. which uses the Magic Home plugin that has the name LED strip mm. that ha is set up to be an RGBWW and does not have pure white. Right. So can you now go, hey Siri, make that white? Well, right now it's updating the current red. settings. You just turned it off. Off. I should be able to turn it back on. You just turned it on. OK. <laughs> Details. So it works, and it's really easy. Yep. Now, so it's uh, not completely. Can you make it not? It's not fully RGB yet? Cyclic? Aha, color. Uh, brightness? <laughs> Yeah. There we go. And up. Great. Color. Bluish. Whitish. Yeah, these are getting good. Let's see it in RGB mode. There we go. And actually, uh, Paul, if, you, if you'll bring up the terminal command, so you can see me going through here, changing the information. But you can see why, how it's changing it on blur, 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 blur. the commands that, that home is sending to the home bridge to say, I need you to make this change to the LED yeah. strip. 
So now I haven't, clearly it's not set up properly yet because I can go to color and... Like it's set up for like cool and dark. Yeah. So if I go to green, this is clearly not green. And this is well, clearly... You have to wait a second for it to catch up, don't you? Oh clear. no, you're right. Yeah, it looks like it's set off. So there's still a bit of troubleshooting to do here. But I think we got the lights working. Yeah. Huh. So now does it work with voice commands? Oh, yes, actually. So let's call this one. Uh, we can give each one its own name. So let's open up home, the device details. Let's give it another light because that's, well, we only get this many icons in mm -hmm. iOS. But let's call it, instead of LED strip, let's call it... Chungus. Chungus. <laughs> I'm really pushing Siri hard. God, I hope Siri knows how to spell Chungus. Okay. So, let's uh, turn off the, the phone. Let's uh, <laughs> turn off the lights. <laughs> get a little dark, darker yeah. in here. Maybe spread out some of the, the LEDs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hey, Siri. <laughs> Wrong Siri. <Okay. laughs> Different Siri. Motherfucker. You traitor. Hey, Siri. Turn off Chungus. Okay, Chungus is on. Turn on Chungus. Oh my god. Set Chungus to green. And it's not green, but you could it's see not... on the terminal that it would change the lights. Uh, wait a second. Set Chungus to 10%. <laughs> Chungus to 100%. <laughs> yes. oh. Chungus to 100%. And there we go. Cool technology. Cool technology. <laughs> So Siri. we got there with just a little bit of troubleshooting. That's, all chunguses uh, to one hundred percent. Just, just to, just to be a thing. Mm -hmm. It was off. Is that, is that because, like, what if you reorder the RGB lines? What if they're probably correct? But what if they're not? Like they're in, they're plugged into the right things, right? R is an R, G is an G. Wait, no, it isn't. Your the... green line is blue, and your blue line is green. Oh, that may explain why my. Why green turns out blue? Yeah. Okay. It all makes sense. Yeah, we we'll, we'll, let's figure that out. Okay. We can do that tonight, and then we can we can always come back and do the the Chinese switch next time. Because I'd still like to get that up and running. Yeah. I don't know. Is the, is the chat interested in seeing me try to flash new firmware via <laughs> header pins to a? Uh, <laughs> to a device from overseas? Or are you guys done with HomeKit at this point? Wait, wait, are you gonna be doing the the, the, the firmware flashing from overseas? <laughs> the very long no. range thing? Actually, here's a fun fact. We've got this set up now. Yeah. We could set it up with some of the HTTP command line oh, stuff. Oh, God's sake. And we have a uh, both an iPad and an Apple TV running in the office. Mm -hmm. We could set this up to control a number of things from via voice command. Let's Wait, think about that. We could also set up all of our rope lighting to work off this, couldn't we? They're not. Well, see, the rope lighting isn't. Uh, the ones we bought for the office are not Wi-Fi enabled. They're IR only. Oh. So we'd have to buy an IR adapter, which is compatible with HomeKit. <laughs> so we literally could have it all on the Wi-Fi. Yeah. We could have dozens of of weird lighting things set up on the Wi-Fi. And which is way too much complexity <laughs> for being able to just walk around and go set to purple, set to purple, set to purple, set to purple. It's just way easier to do that. Hey Beach, set all rooms to purple. <laughs> hey Beach, set the set feed dump to purple. <laughs> hey Beach, set, set AFK oh, to. Could you imagine to be like you know uh, set, uh, set set Studio C to, to feed dump? <laughs> just walk in the room, and go set Studio feed, C to feed dump, and have everything go. <laughs> And just turn to feed dump and be like, oh man. Hey Siri, launch a Luxac. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Golden Knights take on the stars on Friday at 1730. Okay. Thanks. Is I guess it's NHL time again. <laughs> Thanks, Siri. 
There's the sack. I don't know where your button is. All right, let's try that again. So plug it back in. I also like when you were demoing that you were using your somehow beige was the Siri. Yeah. It's like, hey, beige, do this. Would you like to get this, that back so you can? Probably could still do this, I guess, at this point, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm going to see if this fixes the, my color problem. Let's see, color. No. Nope. Purple? That's close. Warm light? That's green. It's sort, sort of warm. You're in the matrix. <laughs> yeah, I put them back where they're supposed to be. Well, I guess maybe it expects there to be a warm white. Hmm. Let's try putting our white into the cool white. This actually reminds me a lot of the. Um how the DMX system works for the uh, overhead light. Oh, do tell. Well, it's basically like it's a similar thing, except instead of you know using the breadboard or wiring all the stuff, the the DMX cables, um, which are, are sort of like uh, uh, there there's ones that are sort of like XLR cables, like they have three pins, and there's ones that have five pins, mm. and so like the ones that have five pins are connected to the uh, the multicolor spots. Uh, and they literally are, each pin is a different color. It's got like red, green, blue, and then intensity. Right. And white, I guess, is the other. And so, or something like that. Intensity. Um, so it's it's actually, it is a little, it's similar to what you're setting up there. It's not like the DMX protocol is not actually like an encoded thing. It's not like it's sending data down that needs to be interpreted. It is literally right. just using the different wires. Well, so there's another thing. I, in addition to the HTML commands, there's also a Homebridge plugin that allows you to just execute ran, uh, not random, but specific terminal commands. Mm. So, if you, we could theoretically hook the HomeKit up to the studio lights as well. All right, let's just clamp that down. Clamp, clamp, cut, nope. Nope. <laughs> clamp, clamp, could get forced out of the hole. Get in the hole. Like, seriously, get in that hole. That's, you shouldn't have a problem with that. Are there any questions out there about HomeKit and its capabilities that I might be able to answer? This makes sense. What did you find? Looks like Etcher is not able to write to this location of the drive. The error is usually caused by a faulty drive, reader, or port. <laughs> and the card is not in a locked position. Yeah, it could be the card. Oh, um, did you... That Patriot Or do shirt. we need to change the location of where it's writing to? Uh, no, I'm just writing it to the built-in reader. Rather, I mean, is the reader connecting to Windows at the moment? I'm sorry? What? Oh, your boot camp is running. Oh, oh I see. Okay, no, it's just out of date, so that's not going to be working. Okay. So that's good. That's it's, good. It's not that problem. What a relief. Let's just try that one more time. The password. Password. It's okay. My password is an elaborate Unix key command. That's a good idea. Yeah. That way, if I type it into the chat accidentally, <laughs> no one knows. Oops! I just I posted that to the that command to the wrong window. It's a good idea. Rm dash rf star. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> You yeah, that, gotta really make sure that you type that in the right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one you might, if you accidentally <laughs> type paste it into the wrong window, could cause you more problems than OPSEC. Huh, why? Are you How far do you get done before you just shit the bed? <laughs> oh, you mean this, not yeah. me. Twenty percent. I'm betting it's the card. I bet you it's the card. I, you know, these are some really shitty cards, and I did not buy the best ones when I was. Patriot memory, you don't say. <laughs> 
that's fine. It was good for what it was meant to do for a while, I'm sure. It, it did it did its did its job for a short period it, of time. It definitely stayed in my desk. And <laughs> did not go anywhere on its own. Yeah, all right, fair. That's good though. All right. I'm gonna delete the the damage for Etcher. You go right ahead. Yeah. Close that. And I'm gonna install that. And I'm gonna Yeah, get clean my Mac running on here. <laughs> okay. You're just gonna clean my Mac for just me? Just gonna clean your Mac. Alright. This No, you were in there! There was time now. <laughs> out, out, damnable. Yeah. It was um working in a location. Is this safe? Yep, that's safe. Okay. We're working in a place where I had uh, root on a lot of Linux systems was very, very nerve wracking. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah, just being able, like, knowing that you can sudo do just about anything, whatever the hell you want. And I'm like, are you sure you're okay with this? And they're like, yeah, you know what? You've been here a couple of years and you haven't screwed up yet. So <laughs> you're overdue, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to do it. And I'm like, well, no, I I don't want to do anything, actually, now that you brought it brought to my attention. Yeah, I'm definitely going to screw up. <laughs> yes. I certainly don't want to, um, I don't want to type any commands into these command lines anymore because I know something's going to go wrong and it's going to be my fault. They're like, yeah, yeah well, that's, that's fine. That's why we hired you. That's why we hired you <laughs> to do these things <laughs> so we don't screw them up first. I'm like, that's good. <sighs> okay, I'm just going to have to strip this wire. All this for a small chance of something working. That's good. Sometimes you know it's just you gotta you gotta. I didn't want to say YOLO. You gotta believe. You gotta believe. Yep. You gotta do what? I gotta believe. Da 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 da. -da. <laughs> if you're at all confused by what's going on right now, check out Rhythm Cafe's episodes on Parappa the Rappa. Here on the Mighty Loading Ready Live Video Entertainment Network. Starring him and someone who's off screen. <sighs> I, I, I like that. Where did my phone go? Underneath your computer. That's why I said, is this a safe place to put this down? You're like, it's fine. Starring, starring Ian and somebody off screen, which theoretically means anybody except you yeah. in the entire world. Oh, you're right. Yeah. I mean, I pointed that way, but... <laughs> your head is going one way, but your like, arms are going the other way. I understand. Well, I, th I still need to troubleshoot the color on this, I think. <laughs> yep, because it's still out of sync by quite a bit. Oh, This hey, is red. red. <laughs> this is not red. It sure isn't. So... So, in in the defense of the uh, HomeKit system, mm -hmm. uh, with our with our the LEDs that we have that are IR controlled and have an actual remote control, mm -hmm. uh, if you push the blue button, they turn green. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so maybe it's just not. Maybe it's the lights. Maybe I mean, it's not me. It like, I think the thing about that remote too is that it shows you a color. And you're like, sure, and you press it, and it's a color close to the color they printed on the remote. And maybe it's just that they ran out of colors to put on the remote. Red is not <laughs> green. No, I know that's that's <laughs> definitely wrong. Like, that's clearly compliment, well, complementary there, colors. There's, but... there's, there are buttons that say RGB. Yeah. And you push the B one, and it goes green. And you push the green one, and it goes blue. See, I, I, I'm going around the, the color wheel of nice, you know. No, you're actually, you're, you're missing it by a little. Nice blues, you know, white. I get the cool blue right. Yeah. white, yeah, that's good. And let's bring it up. Oh, let's get some nice warm, warm. one. Oh. No, no. Oh, it's honey. very sick. Please, my wife. It's very sick. 
she very bright. <laughs> you know what? I think we've done everything we can do tonight. That's awesome. So I'm going to call this episode of Tinker Tailor Solar Fry to a close. But before we go, mm -hmm. we like to thank those of you who have helped make this show and all the great shows here at Loading Ready Run possible. You, the viewer, with your help here, subscribing on twitch.tv slash loading ready run and the Patreon at patreon.com slash loading ready run. Paul, do you have for us today our new subscribers and returning subscribers? I do. Uh, let's see who those people are. You guys can see right here. Yes. We'll All just right. be looking that there. way. The CX is a new subscriber, hey. or Thex, I'm not sure which. And Manocule is also a new subscriber. Welcome, hey. the both of you, welcome you, especially, yes. Andy the Drew for two months, two months of... You came back. Yeah. And uh, Sense amidst madness for 13 months. 13 months, that's well over one year. The BSV for 10 months. And Serafina for 14 months. I can't see my hand pointing. <laughs> I like pie. <laughs> yeah. Red. 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 Three, two, three, one, two is a new subscriber. Thank you for subscribing. And Lurker Spine for 30 months. Welcome back. What a relevant stream since I'm building a retro pie right now. I yeah. hope that went better for you. Corpocracy, corpocracy for nine months, sub baby. I'll name it Beach. I'm sorry. Real Gamer Cow came back at 45 months. Wow, bash that pseudo. You bet. Tevian for six months. Tiny words. They're tiny. Fast to read. Himul for 12 months. Oh, a big subversary. Welcome back, Himul. Congratulations on your year. Lothurn is a brand new subscriber, and thank you so much for joining us. Rolling Carry is also a new subscriber. Man, so many new subscribers tonight. This is awesome. Yeah. Gravity Pike has subscribed for 42 months. Shouts, sir, unlock the front door. I like how you didn't actually say Siri. <laughs> T2 Zane for 41 months. 41 months? My sub baby's probably walking by this point. It's like, how old is your child? 68 weeks. No fairy folklore yeah. is 22 months subscribed. Usually don't watch Tinker Tailor, but saw Raspberry Pi and couldn't help myself. Hope it didn't disappoint. Yeah, Malkior uh, came back after the 12th month, another subversary. True engineers at work. Don't forget your hard hats. All our PPE is actually in a drawer mm -hmm. in the equipment office. <laughs> you always get this one. Yeah. Herp -a -derp -a -derp. <laughs> For four months. Cool technology. I don't know why it's always you. Yumidian for nine months. Pseudo Chamod 777 chungus.sh. Yeah, probably need to do that. Dan 9299 for 44, five months. <laughs> and Jokul Hop, I'm oh, sorry, Jokul Hop 1234 for 48 months. Wow. That's four years. Fishup for 17 months. Resubbing on my birthday. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Gum Blizzard. <laughs> is a new subscriber. Welcome, Gum Blizzard. <laughs> and thank you to Earthen One, Terminal Velocity, The Pear Bear, and Elemental Alchemist for those 1,211 bits. Da bits, da bits. bits. And in particular, uh, 1,000 of those is from The Pear Bear. So oh, wow. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you so much, The Pear Bear. And uh, we do have this poll here. Oh, yeah, as is the, tradition. Uh, Ian is working on a home automation project tonight. What is the most likely result? Well, 31% say uh, due to a mistake, Ian's home automation set is set to the wrong, or he, Ian's home automation is set to the wrong region, prompting him to have to learn Klingon. 20% <laughs> say the house achieves sentience and begins a loving relationship with the bungalow down the street. Aww. 40% mm -hmm. say in a surprising turn of events, the house automates Ian. <laughs> Just all of him. Okay. 12% says everything seems to go perfectly using the parts he received from Cyberdyne. <laughs> All right. Nice. Yep. So far, everything seems to be fine. Yeah. It's working very efficiently. 
Ten percent says uh, Ian's house is apparently built on an ancient capacitor burial ground and will now be haunted by the ghosts of dead electronics. I like that. That's good. Eight percent says Ian automates the house so much that he no longer is required and is left sleeping on the porch. Oh. <laughs> and five percent say Ian automates the house to poop for him. <laughs> That's how I get out each morning. That's how the lock works in your house. Yeah. You have to poop into a bucket. Uh, you know, the door is a sphincter, and you don't know on, you don't want to know how I lock it. Hey, welcome to Butthole Ice Cream. Thanks so much, everyone, for watching. So, oh, oh wait, wait yes, you got yes, something, yes. Paul? Well, I was just gonna say, just just clarify, we you're with the home automation thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's not about sphincters, thank God. Okay. If you like with the with the door lock, like is it li literally that you say unlock my door and it unlocks? Hey Siri, lock the door. You'll need to unlock your iPhone first. Okay. Hmm, Wait. ironic. And communicating. So did you just? Okay, but the door is locked. Scared the shit out of yeah, Corey. Did you just lock Sir Corey in the house. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> Could somebody else just randomly rag walk past your phone and be like, "Hey Siri, lock me." <laughs> well. <laughs> According to tonight's, uh, I could do it to him. Yeah, really. Just tell my watch to tell my phone to do it. Yeah. I like that thing. It is a giant wart on your door, but it doesn't. It's not unattractive. It's just a massive thing. Mm -hmm. It's so I. I just for reference to those of you who might want to buy a smart lock, I bought the second generation August smart lock. Other smart locks are available, but I'm quite happy with it. it it's removable, so that when because I'm renting, I can. You can attach it to a lock that previously exists, and you can remove it when you want to leave without causing any damage. And, yeah, I bought it used, and it didn't occur to me until it was shipping my way that, hold on a second, I'm buying a used smart lock that yeah. I don't know if the person I'm buying it from has erased their credentials oh, from the no. system. And not only am I using it to lock my door, yeah. not only do I not know if these people don't have the credentials but they know where i live because yeah. i've given them my shipping address yeah weird yeah huh so they haven't come yet That's I, so, so you don't you don't necessarily recommend buying a second second hand door lock i would do so with reservations yeah ship it to your, yeah, oh, yeah, it to your p.o box and you know maybe make sure that you can flash the firmware on it which thank goodness i was able to and yeah everything is fine now all of my possessions currently are still in your house yes Take us home, Ian. Speaking of uh, speaking of possessions, what are our upcoming <laughs> shows? Oh Damn, yes, thank work. God. Okay, it's like I have to go home to my wife. Uh, <laughs> What's coming up next, Paul? Well, coming up next we have New Day Tuesday. Sweet. Oh, hey. And the SNES Classic. Beach is back. <clears throat> Beach is back. Beach uh, will never leave. It's, no. <laughs> it's been on everything so far this week. Uh, yeah, so uh, James has got uh, a SNES Classic, and they'll be playing um, games. You can probably guess some of the games that they'll be playing, because... Mm. There's only 30 of them, or 21 always. of them. <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah. Is there anything after that? Oh, there is. Oh, yeah. well. That is Golf Story. Hey! Heather and Ian are going to play Golf Story. Wait, what? <laughs> guess who copied that from Rhythm Cafe? Uh. <laughs> Who no. is actually going to play Golf Story? Me. And? Hopefully me! I get to play Golf Story! <laughs> to be honest, I do like the idea of Golf Story and would like to play it, but I have a job that is not here during the day. Yeah. Heather and other Ian. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Heather and replacement Ian. Uh, and then... One more! One more! Where Beach is going to be playing PUBG! Wait, no. no. He's going to get real good at PUBG. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll give we'll give Beach some time off. Thank we'll you. We'll do one more. Uh, and then we got Mine O'Clock mm -hmm. on uh, Wednesday. And we got some Let's Nope, where yeah. Alex and Ben are going to continue looking at Dark Wood. And Spoop Dimes. Yeah. And then Spooktober. on Wednesday uh, evening, mm. we have Betrayal at Baldur's Gate on the Hill. <laughs> Wait, no, Baldur's Gate. But it's like... From what I understand, it, it's Betrayal House of the Hill, but 
Baldur's Gate. That sounds relevant to some people who might be playing this. Yeah. Which seems like a solid idea. Yeah. It, it comes out this Friday. We are playing it this Wednesday. How, how can uh, that be? Because Avalon Hill was like, hey, would you guys like to play this on stream for your loving audience? We're like, absolutely we would. So they were very they were nice enough to send us an advanced copy of the game so we can set this up and play it for you so you can see if you want to buy it on Friday. Hey. And yeah, and then of course there's 18 games on Thursday. Yep. LR MTG on Thursday. Yep. And Talking Simulator where they're going to be looking at more Observer. Oh, good. So all that stuff and uh, there's more things. But yeah. you, you you know what we we got check out the schedule learningrun.com slash live or the link um, for to the events page above this video, above the on the Twitch page. Yeah. So perfect. Thank you so much, Paul. So with that, we'll call this episode of Tinker Taylor Solder Fry to a close. See you in a fortnight. Ever forward. Never learning. Good night.